This week on Journeys, Double Southern Award winner, Double Southern Award winner, Chantel Sutherland, Chantel Sutherland, Chantel Sutherland, Chantel Sutherland, 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 Sutherland. Sutherland. Streaming live and is hosted by Sean Hall, Leroy Trotman, and I'm Brett Callahan. It is now 7 p.m. on Thursday, May 5th, 2022. Our show is proudly sponsored by the Barbados Turf Club, horse racing at the Garrison Savannah, and our newest sponsor, the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. We've got a busy show, so let's get to it. Here is our show host, Sean Hall and Leroy Trotman. How's it going, guys? Yes, man. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Everybody, good evening, guys. Yes, ready? yes. You guys are ready Everybody. for a wonderful show and have some fun in it at the same time. We're I'm ready. Wearing my, I'm wearing my Very pink. Excited. Sorry if I didn't give you guys the memo, but I'm wearing my pink. Not only do I have a lady on, a beautiful lady on tonight, but tomorrow's also late there at, at, at Kingland. I'm at Churchill. Okay. Sorry. And don't forget, this is our first lady we have on the show. Okay, and at the same time, I want to just a little sadness here of unfortunately in a horse racing game on April 29th, there was a young lady at 20 years old yeah. called Collie. Um, Collie, I think it's Collie Witt. She worked for Joe Sharp. We've lost her, you know, her journey going to where she wanted to go. Of course, shows about journey, so yeah. she had a journey planned out for herself to be a little rider and stuff like that. And unfortunately, on April 29th, she um, got in an accident with a horse and unfortunately has gone so let's send our condolences to her family yes. her racing yes. family and her Correct. family so guys Condolces. you know let's always let's remember this horse racing game all horsemen around the world it's Thank a very you, dangerous right. sport and everyone needs a little bit of hand and a helpful prayer every now and then okay right. all right so as I get, I want to get out of the way, guys. I want to just remind people about this because we're trying to set a journey here and trying to teach the young people in this game a lot of things. But at the same time, we got to still understand it's a very dangerous game that we've been in and that we participate in, you know, in our lives for how long. So I want to get that out of the way. So now, on the other hand, Sean, you got yes. some interviews that you have from Barbados with some young gentlemen down there. And would you kindly help us out and share that with us, please? Yes, we did some interviews for young Barbados who want to come to Canada. And we did one with um, Akeem Walcott and um, Colbert Braffet. Also, Sovereign Award, 2017 Sovereign Award winner, um, my, my, my best great jock. Help me there, guys. Okay, Ray well, Williams. Ray Williams. Sorry, man. Ray Williams. Yeah. Sorry, I'm he was a little, you know. That's okay, he was son. That's okay. A beautiful Sovereign award John, winner in Canada. John, the other yes. day we were speaking about gelding and stuff, and we gelded you pretty early, and he kind of didn't <laughs> change two things about you. And now there's a yes. beautiful lady coming on here. We don't want you yes. getting too nervous. So you know, <laughs> take a deep breath. Take a deep breath, Sean, and let it go. You know, I, and let's I'm get so this thing right now. I'm so okay. nervous. I, okay. I can't All right. There's no need to be, Sean. There's no need to be. All right. We so let's, let, let's get, up, our get into our comfort zone and let's rock yes. and roll, baby. <laughs> let's go. Okay. Great. So this guy, Akeem Walcott, Sean, can you tell us a little yes. bit more before we do the introduction to his video? He, he, he's a Barbadian, but he, he, these guys want to get to North America. They want to be yes. export their talents to the horse racing industry throughout the world, especially in North America and Canada. Correct. And, you know, these guys are experienced horsemen here in Barbados. Um, his last job, he was the assistant trainer for Robert Pierce. 
He started out working for Victor Cheeseman as a groom. He traveled to, to Canada also. So Leroy knows the guy. I mean, Leroy okay. and uh, Carlos, Carlos Grant and those guys, they, they know him. We're going to hear all of that in video, right? Yes, okay, so we're going to hear all of that. Let, let's, let's introduce him to you, Akeem Walker. <laughs> And Sean all here, the host of Journeys with Akim Walker. Started in Barbados with Victor Cheeseman, ended up working assistant trainer for Robert Pierce. But the beauty about it is you had some experiences in Canada with my co-host Leroy Trotman. You also know Carlos Grant. Tell me your experiences that you have had in Canada. Um, basically. My first time I went, went to Canada was in 2013 mm -hmm. when um, I, w I, I met Car um, Carlos Grant first, you know, he was a very nice guy to me and he was my mentor, mm -hmm. he, uh, Leroy Trotman, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Carlos showed me a few things, you know, showed me a lot of notes, you know, take me around the barn and it was a good experience, you know, and then after he moved me on to Leroy Trotman, mm -hmm. which was a, not uh, a good man, not a good man. <laughs> and I did live in Brampton and I used to ride a small bike and it took me an hour to get to Woodbine Trap. <laughs> so Leroy here, who's this Beijing guy riding the bike from Brampton to Woodbine Trap? And yes. it takes an hour. And who's this young man so eager to learn about horses? Yes. And after I sit down and you know have a chat with Leroy, Leroy Trotman and he was working for Ray Baker at the time. Right. And Leroy always tell me, Akeem, you know. It's good to dream small, but it's also good to dream big. Mm -hmm. And when he said that to me, and he showed me some good pointers, some good tips, you know. And it was a good experience there. And, you know, the knowledge I know from there and, and here in Barbados, you know, you put two and two together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I basically want to, like, dream bigger, you know. Right. And have a chance in the outside where, you know, I'm dedicated to mm -hmm. work hard and, you know, my mind is focused and I know what I want. So your plans really right now is to get to Canada to, to see where you could get out of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I know if I go to Canada, I know I will, I will make good things about it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I will make also a name for Barbados as well. Great. You know. Great. Great. Because, we, you know, that's what we are about up there, man. We yeah. really like to push our Barbadian roots, really. And we like to showcase our guys who are doing well. I'm doing it here now with this show. I'm showcasing you to, to the Canadians who I'm hoping that um, when you go to Canada, you will be recognized from this show and easily picked up into the job. Yes, you know, yes, so that'd be yes. great, man. That'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yes. So I'm hoping that this year sometime you'll be looking to go. Yes, this year, hopefully, this year? fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm okay. ready to go right now. You know. All right. Well, folks, this is Akeem Walcott looking to his journey to Canada and um, remember his face he's a big tall guy strong guy who works well hope to see him in Canada this year 2022 journey. so Sean that was Akeem Walker telling yes. everyone how he wants to get to North America, especially Canada, and export his horse racing intelligence and skills to the North America. How can right. we get this done for more Barbadians? Can I can I can I jump in here guys? Yes. Absolutely. Sure. Okay, Brent, Brent. This guy is a bike from Brampton. And a little bike. A little bike. What I hear about this guy. But anyhow, what I want to talk about after I watched this that interview this morning. I drove straight to a trainer's barn and I said to that trainer, I said, listen, I got a kid here. I just sent you a video of this kid that you need to watch this video of him. And I tell you from my heart, I vouch for this guy to get this guy here in your barn as soon as you can. And whatever it takes by any means, necessary, if I can help you bring him up here. And she turned and said to me, Leroy, are you vouching really that much for this kid? He would do anything for him. I said, yes. He said, well, what? I'm going to start work on it right now awesome excellent that's great See, that's, what that's what we're talking about guys that's what we're talking about that's what this show is about we want to so help I'm people. Going, as, as every day come by i'm going to make sure i go to that trainer 
and ask her, is anything I can do to help get this thing going? And that's what I did this morning. As soon as I finished within 15 to 20 minutes, as, as soon as I finished watching that video this morning, I was doing my rounds as an agent rounds, and I went straight to her barn, and that's what I got the results I got from her. So, hey, We guys. know there's a shortage of staff on the backstretch, right? Not only yeah. in Woodbine, but throughout North America. We yeah. would love yeah. to get our Barbadian horsemen overseas to help right. the horse racing industry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so we're... We're into 10 so, minutes here, Sean, guys. We, got, we also have um, Mr. Colbert's his interview. Yes. Colbert. Can you tell Rapid. us a little bit more about that? Um, Col Colbert is a very experienced writer. I, I, I've been asking him for a long time if he would like to, because I always felt that he has the, the right attitude, everything that you need to, to go to an international track. And I always felt he would make a great fit at Woodbine. You know, he's strong, an exercise writer or jockey? No, he's an exercise writer. So he's strong. Excellent. What, yeah, you know what trainers need. So what he's strong, always does give you good information on your horse. And experience. And, and ex strong and experience. Yes. He's a yes. very experienced guy. He's been okay, around well, for a long time. Let's see what this guy, let, let's, let's hear, hear, hear from this guy. Let's check him out. Hi, I'm Sean Hall from Journeys, the host of Journeys. I'm here with one of Barbados' most experienced writers. Good day, my name is Corbett Buffett. I'm one of the more experienced writers at the garrison right now. And it's been a journey so far. Love it, you know, teach you a lot, patience. And I enjoy it, thoroughly enjoy it. It's been in, I mean, a long journey, but fruitful. You have the good days, you have the bad days, but look at that, it's great. How long have you been writing? Um, I've been professionally writing since about 2000, 2001 mm -hmm. and I got introduced to the game by Mr. Patsy Springer rest in his grave and he's the person who actually got me. I mean, I used to be breaking horses before for him but he actually got me down here and from there I've been on my own and give gratitude to the trainers that are around here too because I work for most of them and I learned a lot since then for each and every one, not harnessing something from here, harnessing something from there. So I put it all together to make it one in my own style and I think that I've been pretty successful and especially when it comes to the younger guys and the younger writers too, you know, so I think it's pretty good. Um, your plans going forward, I mean, I know you're not no young spring chicken, mm, but no. would you consider going to Canada? I've been telling you for years now that you should be there. If the timer, if, if, if that rises, would you yeah, make that journey. Yeah, if the opportunity arises, I will surely take it because being at the top of your game and there's always youngsters coming in, you help them as much as you can, but you can't always be there with them. So you have to make space for some. If someone doesn't get an opportunity, how can they arise? So if it does come, I will surely take it with both hands and you know, hope to see the place and experience more, gain more than what I have learned because it will be new territory, new, new tactics, you know, you, you, your eyes will be fully open to what it is out there in the outside world rather than here at home. Home, you're comfortable. Outside, you are more into it. It's more of a business now, you know, you have to be P's and Q's, have to be there. So I think it will be a good journey. Well, Robert, mm -hmm. thank you very much for doing this show. We're now exposing you to many people in Canada that you're open to come mm -hmm. and I'm hope to see by the end of this year or by the middle of this year you're on your way to Canada my brother yeah, ready, thank you very much ready and willing thank you hello my name is Corbett Buffett for journeys and don't forget to hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit that subscribe button love it <laughs> another good interview Sean another good interview so, thank you, you thank know, you. Like we said, now, we save the best for last. The Graham Williams to me is a very, very important guy for Barbados. He's the first apprentice writer to win the Southern Awards. Patrick Husbands has been the only other writer to have done that, and he won as a jockey. And he is excellent. He's a Queen's College guy, very well spoken, very bright guy. And let's go. Let's hear this guy, man. Brilliant. <laughs> All right.
I'm here with 2017 Sovereign Award winner, Ray Williams. And the question I have to ask you now is, Ray, what are you doing in Barbados at this time? Candace um, open. What's going on, man? Uh, originally, I came back uh, last year, July. My grandmother, she wasn't doing too well. And um, to be honest, I thought that, that would have been the last role for her. So I didn't. I wasn't able to see her in, like, in three, maybe four years. And growing up, you know, I was always able to go there when I needed some place to stay or if my parents were working, I had to go there and she would take care of me. So I would have felt really guilty if I was overseas, didn't get to pay my respects to her while she was here. But um, thanks God, she's doing way better. And um, if the opportunity presents itself for me to go overseas, I definitely would take it. Man, listen, so you're, you're not only a family man, but a man of class. I mean, it, only, it takes a man of class to, to want to do that. And I appreciate that, you know, you're showing your, your elders respect and that kind of stuff. So you have no real plans to go back right now or is just you're, you're thinking about Barbados for the rest of the year? Um, well, you know, everyone wants to be home, you know, <laughs> home is it's home, you know, like when you, whenever you come home, you get an, you get embraced from the fans, from the people, from your family, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, I have plans to go over. I want to go to the U.S. And um, if that doesn't work, you know, I can always go to Canada. But I've been in Canada for maybe the better part of two, three years. Mm -hmm. And... There is more, Canada's great, I love it, it's mm -hmm. taught me a lot, but there's more opportunities overseas mm -hmm. in the US and there's a lot of tracks you can spawn across. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to see where I can fit, that I can be successful. Mm -hmm. I can go anywhere I can go, let's say for Keelan, for example. Mm -hmm. yes. I can go to Keelan yes. and mainly all I would get out of it is saying, I wrote at Keelan, mm -hmm. you know? So but I wanna go someplace that I can work, be successful. So I'm just trying to find the right fit for me, mm -hmm. get an agent, go out there, work hard, and hopefully get an opportunity for it on the road. Okay, the question I have to you, you know is how is your weight because i'm gonna I, I remember when you won your sovereign award jason Port wonder because he's shorter than me i remember him looking up at you mm -hmm. you know he said you look like a football player how's your weight man it's good it's great um i had a fall in canada and that's really the only time i've been battling my weight i was immobile for about let's say a month a month and a half mm -hmm. my weight skyrocketed about maybe 140 wow. and i'm say i'm six two so you know it's hard to get back down but I work out like five to six days a week because I have to. If it gets away, I know it's going to be hard mm -hmm. to pull it back. And um, right now it's like 114, 115, just wow. naturally. Um, I think I, I was like 111. I rode a horse for Robert Pierce for a pointy mm -hmm. and I had to be like 111, 112. So it's, it's there, there, bro. It's wow. good. For a guy at 6'2 to be 111 pounds, man, that's amazing, man. Wow. But let me tell you something. I just want to mention one thing. Your Sovereign Award year. How was that for you? How, how, how was that feeling like winning a sovereign award? Because you're the first apprentice to do that from Barbados. Patrick Husband has done it as a jockey, first apprentice. It was special, of course it was special. Um, what it made it even more special is that every part of my family was able to come up there in Canada and they were able to share my success with me some way along the line. Mm -hmm. And then winning it, my mom was there. So you know, you always want to make your mom proud. Yes. So I was walking up to the stage, I was definitely proud to see her there, you know, her eyes were filled with joy, you know. Water coming down, right? it, was, it was special, you know, and obviously to be in a category like that, that's a good cap to have. Wherever you go, like a hundred years from now, you always course. be, I was the first to do it, yes, you know, so yes. definitely um, I thank God for that opportunity. I thank him for keeping me safe throughout that year and obviously to the owners and trainers who gave me that opportunity, the ones that helped me a lot. I have a lot of jockey friends, like for instance here, Rashid Hughes, yes. Jason Lee yes. I go to them even now as elders yes. and they helped me a lot overseas, like uh, Santana, I ride Tyler Gaffleon, those guys help me a lot. Even right. if I make a mistake, names, I go to them. And they're very <laughs> humble guys, very, very humble guys. Yes. They help you and I think that's what it's all about. You know, never be afraid to learn. Never think you've, you know everything. Um, Safi Joseph Jr., yes. I was working for him for a little bit in Gulfstream. He yes. was actually going to give me an opportunity too, but then COVID had just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, you couldn't, you couldn't get a jockey's license because of the COVID. If you were working on the backside, you had to stay as an exercise rider. Okay. But He's taught me loads over there too. So I have a lot to be thankful for. I didn't just get up one day and, and it happened, you know? It was uh, literally blood, sweat and tears and a lot of help along the way. So I'm grateful for that. Wow, well, Ray Williams, thank you very much for doing this interview. And this is Journeys. This is Ray Williams and we're out. Oh, All right. Why you why you so excited to hear this kid talk, eh? No, I see. He's great. Wow. Six foot two. Six foot two. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of laughs.
<laughs> he got the one. I remember when he got the Summer Awards, and I remember Jason Port Wonder like, yes. looking up to him and saying, I remember, I remember that. This yes. guy's football player. You know, a running back. A, 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 a right wide receiver like Randy Moss or something. Yeah, I mean, it was it's great. But he got his weight under control again, though. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. He was well, right well. You should Just set up a show for that kid, though, Sean. Yes. You should set up one of the shows for that kid. Yes, he needs a show of his own, mm -hmm. on yes. his journey. Yes. Because do you hear the names he was calling out? Of course, of course. That Watch him write in Barbados to give him advice. Yes. Those yes. are the best writers in the world. Yes. Well, Watching that's... Barbados that, Racing. Yes. Well, Crazy, that, man. That's saying that we have someone waiting because we have a yes. young lady in Barbados yes. writing also right now. And hopefully yes. that she's tuned in or she will probably watch this after or saw somebody yes. tells us about it so that she Correct. can tell us a little more about it. So let me introduce our wonderful yes. guest that we have sitting in the back waiting, a lifetime earning award jockey, Chantel Sutherland. Chantel Sutherland. Yes, earnings of 55 million eight hundred three hundred and thirty thirty eight thousand two hundred and sixty three dollars in earnings. Wow. Yeah, 1,000, I would want 1,160 wins, 22 great stake wins. Wow, wow Shani. How are you doing, Chantel? Good. 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 <laughs> Looking as wonderful as ever. Looking at, say hello to all of our audience, Chantel, please. <laughs> hello, everyone. I'm so excited. <laughs> Some really fun guys. Good, good. Thank so, you. Chantel, you know what this And Barbados, yes. Well, that wonderful. Yeah, those two guys are enjoying that wonderful weather down there, Chantel. So I don't really want to talk to them too much right now. I mean, we're getting cold in their wonderful beaches and stuff. I'm very upset with those guys. You know, <laughs> you see Sean is getting a good laugh at it right now because he, he sent a show, a picture show the other day. He's going to the beach with horses. And I got really upset about that the other day too, Sean, by the way. But <laughs> well, Chantel, Anyhow, Shani, have you ever seen the horses swim in the beach in Barbados? Uh, I haven't seen them swim in Barbados, but I, um, I've swam with horses before, but it would wow. be kind of cool to see that, and, like a Me. bunch of them. Sean's got a bunch of video footage. Oh, he wow. loves it on a Sunday morning going to the beach with the horses. I think yeah. it's so great. I wish they had pools here at Gulfstream and uh, like they do in Dubai. <laughs> yeah. Well, Shani, this show's all about journeys, and this is about your journey. But before you get into your horse racer journey, I want you to speak a little bit about your hockey. You're very athletic. You started in field hockey. It's something that we play a lot in the Caribbean too growing up. So, and you got a chance to um, go to the Canadian Junior World Cup um, team also. So can you just talk about that a little bit before you get into your horse racing um, journey, please? Yeah, I was um, like 13, 14, and I really wanted to play play field hockey and be really good at it. I wanted to play for Ontario and then I tried out. I loved the game and then I was really strict and really disciplined with myself all the way through high school. And I ended up uh, trying it for the World Cup and I made the team. But I was, uh, once I got to around 18 years old, 19, all the girls grew up around me and the game got really fast. and. Um, I kind of felt myself on the bench and I didn't want to be sitting on the bench. I really wanted to play, but I was really getting knocked around by some of the bigger girls. Like I stayed five foot two and they were coming out at six feet and big. And uh, so I kind of said, maybe there's another sport for me. And I've always been working and both babies and, um, you know, worked at a training facility uh, my whole life. and. Uh, I didn't grow and I said, you know, I've always wanted to be a professional athlete. And I remember in sports, I uh, was doing sports psychology class and it, I had to fit in my occupational sweet spot, being a jockey fit. And I said, you know, I don't know, I'm never going to be any good at it, but it's my passion and I love horses and I want to be an athlete. And so I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm not sure if I can make money at it, but I hope I do. And if I work really hard and it's what you love, um, I think that anything that you love and work hard at will be success. That's right. That's right. Okay. So that was all about that hockey thing. Cause you know, we, we played a lot of that in Barbados. I don't know if they still play a lot of it in Barbados now, Sean, but I know we did play a lot of field hockey down there, you know, 
And would you say that that if you can incorporate that your hockey with your horse racing, would you say that do, did anything for you between going into horse racing or going into horses as toughening you up or anything like that? Yes, I think the discipline of training, you know, getting to the pitch an hour before your your game, practicing, warming up, getting focused, and then um, practicing, you know, three, four hours a day. It's uh, your training, weightlifting, diet, uh, hydrating yourself, all those things you kind of, um, you learn and you kind of learn a routine. And then I for sure took that into racing, but uh, racing went to a whole nother level. A whole nother level. Okay. Well then, share, share that journey with us then as you went to that next level. So when I first went into horse racing, um, you know, I worked with, I, I chose, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to be like, a, my dad is really big in the stock market. And he would always tell me you have to invest and then you watch it grow, but you have to really invest carefully. And I wanted to invest in myself. And I, the time I put into racing, I became a jockey and I went and I contacted Angel Cordero. So I did that, spent a year in the United States, uh, practicing, went back to Woodbine and then, um, took out my license, but I had ridden my whole life. And then the horse racing part, galloping, I did that for two years, two, three years. And then I spent that year with Angel, which really changed everything because uh, race riding is so different than regular riding or polo or three-day eventing. Uh, but I did have the balance for it. So that was great. But the actual technique of racing. And then um, as an apprentice, I didn't really have the strength that I have now. Uh, had to be lighter, so it was really hard. You, so you're torn. You have to, you know, you need that advantage. You need that 10 pounds because why would anyone use you? Um, but I really tried to get polished before I started. And then, you know, the rest was history. Won those two sovereign awards. Uh, and then it was when I went to the United States for the winter time. I met Mike Smith in Florida, and he took me to the next level of training your body. And then I've taken it to another level of diet, um, exercise and I feel like the combination of boxing, yoga, and uh, what else do I do? Um, you know, cycling, sometimes go to soul cycle class. But for me, the most important thing was a yoga, and it, it's not yoga like weightlifting yoga, there's hot yoga. I do the weightlifting yoga, the hot yoga, I do balance, I do a lot of handstands. And this, all this yoga is not only so great for gain an injury, you're still flexible. And at my age, um, like I have so much core strength from it and also just the ability, to, like my shoulders are strong. It's just such an incredible um, thing to do, not only just for flexibility, but your mind mentally, it's really tough to lose a lot and it's tough to be a punching bag for a trainer and an owner and even when you win you get taken off or people that you're uh, you, you know you wrote a female what did you did you you shouldn't have to expect to win and uh, I got that one the other day and uh, it's just yeah you so the mental part flexibility strength and and also just the detox, detoxing your body all the time, cleaning your liver. I mean, even for anyone, going in the sun is so great for you, great for your skin. Um, so, and so that would be my dream to getting where I am at now and then really sustaining myself. And it is hard work. It's a full-time job. When people say, oh, well, why don't you do this? It's, it's like, I'm a, I'll eat myself out of a job. I have to be very careful. Um, I remember early on in my career, uh, I got into the habit of flipping like most jockeys do, and I do not do that now. I'm super, super healthy. I have a very balanced uh, relationship with food, which took years to get, and I, it's so much more so stronger, mentally stable. Um, so I, I guess in a nutshell, that kind of I think wraps it up, I think. But what about, what about LASIKs? I, I read something, but you, you talked about LASIKs somewhere. 
I never took Latex. You never um, took it? Okay. I that I saw a lot of other jockeys struggle on it. I feel yes. like Latex is so dangerous for yes. uh, humans because we lose all that synovial fluid. Um, yes. I did see Mickey Walls do it, and I probably shouldn't name somebody, but mm -hmm. I remember at the end of his career, he really struggled, and it really was hard to watch because mm -hmm. you have to remember that our heart is a muscle. Like the yes. That's a heart attack. Yes. And our brain is just like, you know, bouncing around in fluid. And it's just even to get that synovial fluid back in the, the electrolytes is hard mm -hmm. to do without puffing up and then struggling. It's like a war. Once you start that, it's, it's struggle. I, I, I yeah. took six when I was a jock. And I remember the pharmacist used to tell me he was very not comfortable selling me the stuff. He said, you know, this thing could kill you, man. You earn. Yeah. It's only when they got older and more you understood what it could do to you. But um, back then you were young and carefree and you just used to go for it. But you're right. It's not good. As professional athletes, I think health and education like you've got, right. Chantal, about um, what makes the body reach its peak. I mean, tell us more about that, especially in this day of age where health care is number one for a uh, sportsman like a jockey yes so you know now we don't you know this generation like myself tom brady uh these people are still not, not retiring early we're, we're retiring later because we take care of our body right. uh, the people before us they would smoke and and drink and yeah. you know it's <laughs> you know like it's okay to have you know have fun and maybe let loose sometimes but remember that alcohol is ethanol with sugar and it's oh. just you know poison so everything with balance for sure like i'm not saying you know don't drink or i would taboo or anything just, you know our culture in canada is like somebody goes you don't drink are you okay? Like, well, you, okay? You know, when did that? But like, um, you know, it's cold in Canada, and everyone's like, let's have a beer, a. Eh? It's just our culture is very open to it. But then, having traveled and gone to California, it's so taboo. If you drink too much, you go to rehab, and then it's just like certain cultures. I found that it's okay and not okay. But for me, as an athlete, I really had to. When I'm racing, I can be very visual, mindful of it. And it's not good for your weight either. It makes you struggle more. Um, but believe me, I do like to have a good time with my friends here and there. And then I would say, um, you know, with your liver too, that, you know, when your liver's working well, and your skin looks amazing, your eyes look great, and your, your hydrated hydration is so important. Like you need not only just water, you need electrolytes, and that's great for your skin. And eating healthy like uh people would ask what do you eat and i eat vegetables and i have uh, lots of vitamins i have these vitamins they look like horse pills they're like hey they look like hey i gave it to my friend the other day <laughs> and i'm like well, it looks like hey it tastes like hey but it's really good <laughs> and uh you know smoothies uh, as far as like protein shakes i mean women don't have to have as much protein as guys you do have more muscle you, you need to uh, you just your body uh, burns a little faster than ours does. Uh, that being said, I probably have to work out, um, you know, my shoulders more and my core. Men are just, you just do have a natural ability to be really strong there. My legs are, so that's my power position. Men aren't always as strong in their legs. They either have, you know, skinnier legs, not all, but I would see that part would be my advantage compared to a guy. So it's all different things. And then at my age and my experience, um, it's amazing to ride with these young riders because I'm watching them and I, I feel like it's unfair. I feel like I'm playing field hockey with little kids and I have this experience with knowledge. And you see them, um, some of them, you know, screwing up the pace or making a really bad error, going in a bad spot or not, you know, not like, you know, being baited to go on the rail with a bunch of it's really cool and I'm really happy to be wearing that and not to be physically uh, but it's it's perfect it's a full cool, cool time job well that's a great um, tips for all the young sportsmen and jockeys out there 
health, body health. You have to listen to your body and be sensitive to it. And the more healthy you are, naturally, the more efficient your body will be when you're racing. Yes, and you do owe it to your trainer, to your owner, to have, be able to go there and help a horse, like major. You have to be strong enough that your body, you know you're healthy, you're not getting exhausted, that you're ready to ride the next one, you're ready to ride the next one. And when you don't feel like that, that means you gotta get in that gym and you, go, you owe it to yourself. And you know, there are days where I'm like, ah, it's hot. But I go and do hot yoga more. I go and sauna more to get used to that heat. And you have to teach yourself and your body to adapt. The human body is incredible. Um, and what you eat will show up. Like you eat garbage, you will look like garbage. You eat well, you're going to look amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shani, um, before I go any further, Shani, could you put up your volume a little more on your computer? I don't know if okay. I'm getting a little bit low back here. I don't know if the audience is hearing you as well as I'm not that well. Okay. That sounds a lot better. Brent, we're okay there, Brent? That sounds great, yeah. Okay. All right, Shani, so from the health part of the game, you've kind of and teach us a lot there, but let's go to October 9th, 2000, where you rode your first winner, first career race, right? Yes, uh, that was at Woodbine. And yes, at Woodbine, because I want to, let's not forget our home ground here first before we get into the big, yeah, before we get into the big, big um, guns over there, okay? So let's let's sit back here a little bit and let's talk about home a little bit because you've done pretty good here for yourself, been on a few nice state races at Woodbine and stuff like that. So let's, you know, get into the journey part of Woodbine here first before we jump to the big boys. Okay. Okay. Woodbine was amazing for me. It was, uh, I love the Canadian mentality. It's where I learned to work hard. And uh, I just love Canadians. They're just nice people. And I love Asians. They're just so cool. And always kind. And I never, ever felt any racism. I never felt, uh, because I'm a woman, I, you know, couldn't be a jockey. Everyone was super supportive. And even being a you know a minority as a woman in the room, I never felt like that there. It was Canada is very multicultural, and I love that about Canada. And I also love um, my agent in Canada. The, the, the huge part of being a jockey is not just yourself. You have a relationship with an agent, and they work very hard for you. And the the relationship you develop with them is so important because you don't really have a coach. And you need a support system and you need your agent to sometimes be your pom-poms and your cheerleader because you can get down. And sometimes yes. it's important to cheer on your agent because they work hard too and they get the no's or the excuses and they you don't want to tell your jockey because you don't want to hurt their feelings. And you really, a good agent can kill a jockey or make a jockey. So it's that it's, they're always in behind the scenes and they never really get spoken about. But I would say my best agent ever I had was John Bell. And I loved Don Parente. Uh, but John Bell was just, he taught me so much great how, guy, to build your, how to build your uh, yourself as a jockey. You pick five or six big horses and you pick, you know, five allowance horses. You pick an outfit that's successful and you get anchored in and uh, build a tough, strong, loyal relationship then from there, everything fills in. And it's so true. And I've used that that structure ever since I left. And uh, so Canada, thank you to Canada for that. And John Bell, and just everyone in Canada is awesome. And I love that. It's a dream to ride. Speaking about John Bell, how did that relationship start it? So, uh, Todd Cable, uh, a jockey that is um, now rest in peace, uh, yes. he was really talented and he was kind of going through some stuff personally. And John, um, I, I think I asked John or something came up and I was open and uh, Todd was very like on and off and not consistent. And I was, he could tell I was willing to work hard and I was going to really make sure I didn't embarrass John Bell. Like I was dedicated, I committed, and I begged, I wanted John. And it just so happened John came the club. And at first it, he was, it was hard for him to work with a woman and, and went to, you know, I am the person who pays the bills, but also 
I never treated him like we weren't equal. But I think when I would say, I really like this horse and I don't like this horse. He's like, no, no, no. You're going to ride what I put you on. And that's how this is going to go. And I was like, wow, okay. So he at first didn't take some of the things um, input. But then later, I, you know, things happen and he'd be like, oh, maybe we should have rode that one. And as a jockey, I can feel anything. And we got to this really special place where he was like, okay, who do you want to ride? And I'm like, this one or that one? This one or that one? Like, so he appreciated your <laughs> feedback. <laughs> and it was awesome. Once we did that, it, we were really tough and awesome. And we, I guess I was chasing Patrick Husbands and Mark Cassie for a long time. <laughs> Not a, a great, a great, well, um, go ahead, Sean. No, I, I read somewhere, but you talked about your relationship with Todd Cable, though. It didn't sound good. Can you go a little further on that? Uh, Todd was um, a bully, and uh, he was the type of guy that when everyone's sweating in the sauna, you know, he'd leave and turn it really hot. It, it's hard to get the sauna at a place where everyone can be comfortable and you know, some of the guys had to spend a lot of time in there and they would complain with that. He was very um, contagious and he uh, it just found him to be, when I got successful, he was maybe, you know, lack of a better word, maybe a little bit jealous, but he had way more uh, colorful, uh, maybe a colorful career, but like a lot of success in comparison to me. Like the guy won everything. But I think he was in either you know, intimidated or just he was in a really challenging place in his life. I think so. It, was, it, was, it poured over his temper into the room and to be around this unpredictable person. And I know we all see. I've gotten my, uh, you know, uh, conversations and confrontations in the room. It's it's a very job that like, you think road rage is real, like horse rage is, uh, it's your life out there. And when people make mistakes or they do something on purpose and disrespect you on horse, it's really challenging to not get really upset. But I think Todd was more, it just was different. And I think I came in and it just, he was a little, he was a bully a little bit, not just to me, to a lot of the guys, like to the point where he would, he'd be in the gate and he would just, like he would go over and grab you know, a man in their private area just before the gate broke. And it's just like, it's not even like, if you, just because it's two men, you're not, it's sexual harassment. You're not allowed to do that. And it's just, it was, it was, no one said anything back then and they just let it go. But it's, it was so inappropriate. It was, it, the word would be like dominating to some of the people. But I, I mean, I'm sure outside of that, like there were moments like Todd, Todd was a really interesting guy and fun. Like we had, interesting well you so, know, in, any, in any game you come into and uh, you become you know competitive and, and nobody always i mean the guy that's always at the top you know everybody's trying to dethrone him right and sometimes guys news by any means necessary to dethrone any guy i mean in any sport you go into you you'll find that you have the guy that that competes at uh you know the right level and the right way but then you have the guy that wants to compete and he has to cheat to compete in order to get there sometimes those guys never become successful and then there's guys that become successful with it but down the road you know at the end of it all said and done you know it all comes to light so you know we're not here to really you know jump on to all over todd and what what he's done and stuff like that at the same time but it's more about your journey and, and some of the things that you've done and become successful with because you're were rated at, at least at one of the canadian's top i mean earning athlete not just a jockey an athlete in canada you know what i mean and that year you earned 5.7 million dollars in person earnings and i said not just a jockey you were with the top athlete one of the top athletes in canada so those are the things that i really want to more elaborate on and, and talk about a little more you know me doing that and and you as to say as a female i don't want to you know speak too much on that female to put you in a different place but you compete in the room with a lot of guys and at one point and some points you're in a race with all guys competing against speak a little bit more on that 
for me, please. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, and, and, and rest in peace, Todd. Todd was, uh, you know, he was very well loved by a lot of people and he was incredible when he was at the top of his game and he was an incredibly intelligent rider. And I would take that. So many of us really have a lot of respect for his ability to read a race. And even to this day, it's just he had a gift. Um, and then, you know, riding with all different kind of all different kinds of cultures of men, I feel that um, I have a lot of respect from a lot of the guys now. Uh, and it took some time to get to that space. I had to prove myself. I don't have to prove myself anymore. Um, but sometimes you'll get a, a newer doc's room and you're going to get it. someone who's going to push push back a little bit. You know, you're a woman and uh, everyone's culture is different. And uh, I know that you know, the Latin culture, there's not many female jockeys and, and a lot of females are moms and, um, you know, it's just a different upbringing and that's okay. It's just uh, some men are accepting and some just are not. And uh, they, uh, it's just uh, a new way that I have to, uh, you know, kind of work around, um, you know, being a jockey. And there's always going to be one or two of the track that you're going to like. And, and it takes, like, it's taken a whole year, really, to get to know uh, the guys here. And I would say, like, I, I really like all of them. There's one or two that we seem to always get in a race where somebody's, you know, yelling or somebody's getting mad at somebody or someone's cutting it too tight or shading someone. And, you know, it gets dangerous and it's already dangerous for the horses. So... I mean, I think it's really important that as a group of jockeys, I know we got to compete and I know you want to win. I know you want to feed your family. You want to be the best. Uh, we really, and I think I try to focus on, uh, we don't want to kill each other. And we really want to look at the bigger picture, which is take care of the horses. Because if we keep tearing them up, we're not going to have anything to ride. And it's the most important thing. It's like these horses give us so much. Well said. And they just go home for a bucket of feed yeah. and they don't get a win picture. They yeah. just, you know, we got to love them. We got to be really careful. And, you know, it's really important that we have these whip rules now. And, and uh, you know, the stewards are really strict and vigilant because, you know, you let a guy get away here or there. And then you know how it is. It's one's going to take advantage and then it yeah. makes it dangerous. So, uh, and so that would be my thing that I would like to and hope that when I leave the game, like I had something positive in that part of the game. Like, you know, we have to be careful. And Chantel, you always seem like an animal lover, but especially horse lovers. <laughs> I, I mean, what about the animal? You talk so highly of the horse just now and they run a whole race just for a bucket of feed. <laughs> <laughs> They're great animals, aren't they? They're incredible. Oh my God. And then when they fall in love with you and it takes only like, you know, 10 minutes to sit at their stall and maybe wait for them to hug and nuzzle you and kiss you. And then you give them a mint and then they see you again. They know who you are. I had one. I love him. He just would hug me with his head and he, he just would like, he wouldn't bite me, but he just nibble on my belt and like, and I know you guys all have felt it. And if you could, Absolutely. like, it's the most amazing thing in the world. Like, they're yeah. so loving. Yes. So. There's always that one or two horses in your career that stand out. And yeah. I remember riding a horse in Barbados, Cooper, Sean, you might remember. The horse loved the groom. And the groom would go hiding from the horse uh, in the different stalls. and would just shout his name, bird, bird. And the horse would be there looking for him. and. Wow. I mean, he, he had such a great connection with that horse. Sean, and, Mike is off. Sean, so your happy. mic is off. We can't hear you, Sean. Sean, oh. you're no, not Shani, yeah. not Shani. Okay. No, <laughs> Mike. no I, was, I was saying that um, that was Archie with Cooper. He would just Archie. go on hike. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. And yes. I saw it one time. I couldn't believe it because when he said to let him go, and he was like, this is Cooper, the great Cooper. You want to take off his halter and let him go? And that horse just won't. And was looking for him, like looking, following his Actually voice. Actually searching. <laughs> yes, it was shocking. I couldn't believe it, but I saw cool. that. My own. If nobody told, if nobody told me, so I won't believe it. But I saw it myself. 
All right, okay. Shiny, I want to play a, a thing here. Unfortunately, we can't get it on video, but I want to want you guys to listen a little bit and then you can um, elaborate a little bit on it for us, please. Overcoming obstacles. What was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome to become a jockey? The biggest obstacle I had to overcome was letting go of the idea that because I'm a woman, I'm going to be treated differently, even though I was. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to make it play in my favor in order to accept it, embrace it, and still make myself the best that I could be. And no matter what, um, it was an obstacle. And it is for women to be a jockey. Did you see resentment, I mean, from both men and women? Yes. I got a lot of, uh, she's successful because she's pretty, or she's successful because she sleeps with the trainers. And... You know, it's always people got to go there. And it's it's not fair when you're, you are successful and you do do well and you are working so hard. And I worked so hard and I trained so hard and I was so disciplined with my diet. And then you get someone saying something like that or, you know, putting it on. I'm going to stop it right there, Shiny. When I heard that, I listened to that because I did some research and stuff, you know, when I heard that. For me, as one of your fans, it kind of upset me a lot. To hear, you know, people, oh, they're saying things like that to you because I've seen your hard work. I've seen you in the morning. I've seen you doing your hustle. I'm an agent now for Patrick and Sahin Savachi. So I've seen a lot of what you've done. When I was assistant trainer also for Reed Baker, you've rode a lot of races for us and stuff like that. And I know how hard you work. And that really upset me. And me and, and on the outside, listening to it and being one of your fans, I can imagine how you felt. So could, you know, talk to us about that, please. Well, thank you for saying that, Libra. That's really nice of you, and it means a lot, and it, it really uh, touches my heart and means so much to me, so thank you. Um, I, welcome. yeah, you, it's just, I'm, I'm sure, I, and I'm not the only one being a woman, like, I've seen, I've seen um, in, in different tracks, like, um, a black jockey and just the struggle, and it's, it's real, like, in certain tracks, like, it's, you know, I'm not going to name them, but when you go to the Please, South. No, let's, let's leave names out. Let's just talk yes. about this, but we're going to just leave yeah. that behind. So there's that. So I, it's not just me struggling. And there's other things, too. And then you see, you know, in certain cultures, you know, they don't like Latin riders. They like a white rider. or And it's just uh, everyone has their thing. And I wish so much that all of us could just, you know, it doesn't matter, it, it, male or female, black, white, uh, Chinese, anything. Just, uh, you know, if the person's working hard and they're good at what they do, they should just, you should give them a chance. And, um, you know, hopefully the next, you know, generations are going to be more open. And it, it has getting better. But, uh, and I think to um, women in our sport, they don't, stay as long as myself is because you know a lot of them choose to have children and women really can't have kids and still ride it's very rare and I'm sure extremely difficult so I didn't have that opportunity and it just never was in my um future so I continue to stay riding which I'm very happy riding and I love it um, maybe that's why I love horses so much because they're like babies to me and I wish I had been able to have that experience but you know, God didn't give me that. And uh, so I guess this is where he wants me. And I, I'm really confident in that and I'm happy. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I guess, I don't know what I'm trying to get back to say. Just I wish uh, those kind of barriers could be dropped. And especially, you know, I just wish people would just give people more of a chance. If they put in the work and they can do and they're athletic and, all that, like this little girl that you're talking about in Barbados, I hope she gets a chance and I hope that she will really work hard to get strong and physically fit. I mean, that's running, training, um, you know, going to a gym and like doing weights and being able to push, push like things on the ground, like tires and like she's got to be, she's got to get strong and to be able to push and help and hold a horse. And, and then once you have that, then racing gets so fun because your body's working for you. <laughs> And you can actually beat another jockey because they haven't done the work. Yes. And it's awesome. You're like, yes. <laughs> you know? And uh, so, and that's when it really is exciting to be a jock. 
Yeah. So um, covering that that part of it, um, let's get a little excited about the horses that you rode in Canada, some of the horses that you rode in Canada, some of the trainers that you rode and you became very successful with. And, you know, name some of those horses and stuff like that, some of those stake races that you won and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You won the Wonderwear twice. 2008 seemed to be a very good year in Canada for you. As I'm looking back at some of the stuff, you know, you with the with approval, the swing for the, the silver deputy, you know, all these races you want us at the great stakes, the Mazarine, a lot of these nice stake races you want in Canada. It seemed as though you had a really good year in Canada um, with winning these the, the Irish O'Brien stakes, you know, all these races you want in Canada. Could you, you know, share a little bit with that also, please? I think it, went, it was uh, 2000 is when I started riding and then Gary Stevens yeah. said, uh, you have to, it takes 10 years to get to where, to be a good jockey. And I think around that eighth year, I was really um, just getting good at what I was doing. I was stronger now. I had more experience. And that was when I met John Bell and just everything was just working. I was in a zone. I was focused and I was just, you know, I had prayed for it. I wanted it. And it was like... You know, you're in alignment with yourself, with what you're doing. And that year, too, I just, I was so patient on the grass. And it worked for Woodbine. That grass course is just so unique and special. And then it just translated into Saratoga. And I was a queen of long thoughts. And I just was gutsy on the rail. I would take the time to wait. And I could feel now how much work I had, how much I didn't have, how was the pace moving. What's everyone else doing? And then now I can see my sister in front of me. I can see three or four ahead of me. And then, then it got it got really fun. Just, you know what you're doing, and you're athletic now. You're strong. And it does take time to get there, but uh, that's what I think happened there. That was like a, it was when it all the started line and everything kind of came together. And I was just you know really um, I was single in my life, just not worrying about anyone but me, and just really working hard and. Um, I, um, well, you, you're you're two times Savage Award winner, also too, right? Are those two trophies still the front and center in inside of your home? Yes, I actually have it in my room. Um, <laughs> up, up on this, this ledge. Yeah, no, I love that. Uh, that's a nice trophy. Um, yeah. I'm very proud of it. And um, there's some other ones, but I moved so much, like I don't even know where everything is. I know my mom has a lot of stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I've moved a lot in my career. It's so I've yeah. lost, things, but thank God. But I mean, because of those, because of those two trophies, and I'm doing it at home also. You know what I mean? I was hoping that you know you can say that they're still front and center inside of your home, and they're not. You can keep um, brushing the dust off of them. You know what I mean? Making sure everybody can still see them. <laughs> yes, yes, and I, and they do see them, and I have stuff around the house that's really cool because I've had a, I've had a really an interesting career for sure. I've been to a lot of different places and um, yeah, and I'm proud of myself. So it's good. It's good to love yourself, to be happy about yourself. And sure, you know, I have days where it gets rough, but um, I would say it's been a great career. I hope I have so much more fun things to do. And uh, I know that I'm going to be going to Spain, Madrid in September, October. There's a jockey challenge uh, coming up, and then they're doing something in like Italy and some other cool stuff. Wow. Commentating, it's uh, I have a meeting on Tuesday with this group from Europe, and uh, I'll you know keep you guys posted. And when I do that kind of stuff and travel again, I'll do tons of stuff on Twitter. Um, but yeah, like. My life is good. I'm not married, no kids, but I got horses. <laughs> having fun. You're having, you're having fun. So like myself, Sean, and Brent, we're Barbadians. And we have a lot of Barbadian guys, you know, at Roadbine Racetrack. And you've met a lot of guys there. But you also rode in Barbados. And, you know, you, I, I'm reading something here saying um, that you you were first leading rider with Bang Swept, John o. Jones, and with Brand Dancer, third respectively in 2005, and then you stuff like that. So help me out a little bit here about that, your, your, your journey in Barbados. So when I went to Barbados, and, and just on a side note, um, Safi Joseph is in the Kentucky Derby with White Abario, and he's uh, from uh, Barbados. Yeah. 
Yes. And he even has the whole Barbados, you know, the fork that you guys have. That's his, yes, the trident. Yeah, the trident. Yeah, the trident. He's, yeah. The trident. And he's so, <laughs> the accent's still really strong. His dad has a really thick accent. And what a great horseman he's become. And he's got like two, 250 horses at uh, Gulfstream. And wow. I mean, good luck to him in the Kentucky Derby. It's hard to do. And it's, Barbados is a little place. Like, you guys should be so proud. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Barbados, when I went there, I was more shocked when I saw the wall. But that man, we gotta drive ride straight towards it. And, like, <laughs> and I remember the guy saying, "Don't worry, shut down. No worry, no worry, no worry. Just go. Like, no worry. Just north turn, north turn. Come on, come on. Just go, go." <laughs> Well, we're speaking with two. We have two guys here that rode, rode there doing that. I mean, their life. And Sean always, you know, speak highly of our Barbadian writers. So, Sean, can you talk a little bit about how much you, you know, talk about our Barbadian writers and 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 on that small track and when they get to the big surface, what they? Yeah, I think writing at the Garrison really makes you a writer. You know what I mean? I mean, most of our guys that have written at the Garrison have gone. To all over the world have done very well. So it's, it has to be something. And I I personally feel it's the racetrack. I had Jim Bannon on the show. I talked to him about it and he said, Sean, when you write the garrison, you could write anywhere in the world. And I felt good to hear a guy like Jim Bannon saying that, you know, because he's he, he'd been one of the best in um, Kansas for many years at Annals and that kind of stuff. But I hit that wall a couple of times is not it's not very nice um you know it's not very nice <laughs> i remember i almost killed chris griffith one one day a morning we were breezing horses and the horses both the horses fell and chris was on the inside of me and i was on the outside so i was pretty safe but my horse was i mean his legs were all at chris and i was saying oh, i could kill this youngster i mean <laughs> but you know we've all tasted the no, the, the dirt going on there at some stage. I, <laughs> Brett, you, you, ever, you ever hit the dust around there? Man, I, I missed the wall, but the horse went straight for the fence and I ended up <laughs> chipping a bone in my elbow. <laughs> and Mike Goddard, a uh, famous photographer and commentator in Barbados, he had his um, camera lens lined up. There was this horse, Jasmine. Everybody, yes. this horse bolted around the turn. And uh, Bill Marshall put me on him and said, this little kid weighs 75 pounds. He'll get him around. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I went straight into the fence. <laughs> yeah, but we, we all been there and, you know, we, we, we survived. We survived. That's one I could say. Nobody made already, us better, you know, right? Yes, made us better. Better men and that kind of stuff. But I think what do you think, you know, Chantel? What do you, what was your I, experience? What, I, what I do you feel, feel like... The, they have great, great riders that come from Barbados because the it's going the other way, which is interesting in itself, but the turns are tight and they're not mm -hmm. always uniform. So yes. that first turn by that wall is very tricky and tight. And, yes. and then you have to be able to know your pace because you got to cut that tight, the backside, yes. you got to like get a breather, you got to come around the next turn, but yes. you still have a bit of a long stretch to, to mm -hmm. get going. And so you got to find out when you can give a horse almost two breeders and throw that race. It's just that it's more of a bull type race track. And uh, you, the, when I went there, I remember Patrick's husband said, Shani, Shani, don't mess around. Don't mess around. He said, you just take back. Don't get in there with those guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to give you no chance. But they don't they don't really bang into each other. It's close, you're like, huh, yes. it's tight, but yes. it, they don't kill each other. And then no, no. I never this it they it just you gotta they ride it's a flock bird and it's tight. But yes, yes. It's, I mean and they just learn they just they they're so good at it. And then yes. you'll go to other tracks where you'll get an inexperienced rider and you'll smash everyone and everyone's like, what the hell? But <laughs> I think you really hit the nail on the head with that. Good, because we have to angle all the little turns, yeah. we're more aware that we have to maneuver the horse 
yes. every 10 jumps we have to adjust yeah. to that rail coming in and out and <laughs> going down the backside it was very funny and amazing Chantel you still remember our racetrack from back in 2005 you almost yeah. described the entire circumference of our little five and a half bull ring Brett, Brett and Sean Chantel can yeah. you repeat Patrick husbands again please <laughs> I had to hear that one more time. <laughs> I love it. invite to get in the Barbados Turf Club to invite um, Chantel and some other women jockeys to come and compete in Barbados in the upcoming year or two. Well, Would that be a great thing? Would you be open to coming back, Chantel? Oh, for sure. I'd love to, but don't bring Patrick. You know how that one's going to go. He'll be dancing with everyone. <laughs> and he'll be like, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> You know Patrick. <laughs> but Patrick, he doesn't let ride in the Barbados anymore, man. He he doesn't really he doesn't come no. home anymore to ride. I'll he bet you if Chantel party. comes, he will come and ride yeah, in the Barbados yeah, yeah, with Chantel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long yeah. as he doesn't Maybe. turn himself backwards on a horse and he, <laughs> by with me. he beats me. That's like really. Yeah, he's done that already, getting on backwards. Wow, I said the guy's wild. <laughs> but I think he's getting tamer maybe in his older age. I don't know. I haven't seen him. He, he threatened to retire last winter, huh? So, Leroy, you've got to know about him. Maybe we get another couple of years out of him. We could get Chantel. We'll maybe have a boys we'll team here because women. We'll, we'll play it by ear. But it, speaking about retirement, Chantel did the same thing too, right? She retired and she made a comeback. I mean, yeah. you know. And she came back stronger. But before we talk about your retirement, you know, you did you go to California and ride before you retired or you retired and then went to California came back? Yeah, to so I went the I went to California and then I wanted to that was when I got married and I was uh, thirty seven and it was like, Okay, well if we're gonna do the baby thing, you know, I gotta take some time off and you know, it's probably that was what I planned. And then um, so I took four years and it just didn't work out, it didn't happen. And then I really wanted to go back to the track because I was miserable. I was so sad. So, to, you know, that hadn't worked out. I'd given up my career. And actually, I really wanted to just take a break. But my brother went on Twitter and said, my I saw that interview. Like, I want, I'm like, what? And then all the media came in the jocks room and they're like, oh, you're retiring. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and they're like, oh, your brother tweeted it. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh my God. I didn't talk to my brother for a year. I just wanted to kill oh, him. No. <laughs> so, but then, you know, but, and I've learned, you know, even Patrick, if, if you want to take a break, it's good. Sometimes you do need a break. But uh, uh, when you say that crazy R word, everybody goes, oh, I don't even like that word. Okay. Well, we saw some nice I must admit, though, I gotta admit that with Patrick with the break at the end of the season he was all banged up, man. The guy looked like if he was 70 years old, you know, he was hurting. But now he's got some time, his body seemed to heal a lot. He looks happy again and so sometimes you just need that, as you said, two yeah. or three months break and you're gonna go again. Yeah, because yeah, I, if it makes you happy, if it's making him happy and I know it makes me happy, and when it stops, then yeah, you gotta. That's when you take break. Because I'm communicating with him this winter. To me, it was like his happiest winter that I've seen him had that this winter. You know, what to compare the other winters, but yeah, you know, he was more joyful. He, he it is the racing went out of his mind. He was just enjoying himself. You know, what I mean, I mean, at one point he went to Grenada and he was supposed to come back, and he either missed his flight or. Pretend he misses flight, <laughs> and, oh, and, my and, God. <laughs> and you know, and and he was enjoying himself. Every morning, he sent me a video with him because yeah. where he was living, you can see the ocean and everything. Right and he was calling his, he was calling it his yeah. backyard. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, when what Shani's saying that 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 time away 
you you become yeah. so much happier mentally yeah. and physically you know what i mean because you guys go through so much trying to pull away and all these things that like those big animals out there trying to you know maneuver through the spaces guys bumping all over your life is you know you put your life on the line for our entertainment as as gamblers or, or spectators whatever the case may be and you know it takes a toll on you mentally right shiny sure and even like when somebody you're having such a good time with a horse and you're winning and the horse and you're getting this relationship with the horse and then they just rip it from you and take it and give it to someone mm. else and it's mm. like something you just have to stomach and deal with and that's just the way our game is and it's their money it's their horse they can do whatever they want and it's a privilege so if you just so there's that part of it but i was wondering are Leroy, are you going to be his dog agent is she going to be a jockey no, I don't think so. No. I think she's going to no. get a little big there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think she's going to get a little big. It, it would be, it would be nice. It would be nice. But I know his nephew, his nephew is up there Gallup right now for Kevin Atard and we're just waiting to get certain things done. And he's, you know, I think he's going to be the next Patrick husband. I don't want to put well, too much pressure on him, but he looks yeah. the part and everything on a horse in the morning. You know, he works with Kevin Natard and he does a wonderful job in the morning. You know what I mean? So well, it's something. Kevin is really Kevin, Kevin, yeah, Kevin is really, you know, That's where I came a long up. while and yeah. he's, he's, he's coming along very well. So it's just only a matter of time for getting him to come out and stuff like that. But at the same time, you don't want to come out too early because then you have to stop so you can get that extension, you know what I mean? And yeah. we'll, we'll work towards that in, in the right way. So hopefully you'll get to see him soon and everybody that's sitting back and waiting for him and hopefully he can do, do what you've done with the, the two sovereigns award as an apprentice too, right? Yeah, I think with the with an apprentice, the best thing is like when you have a house, a house coming for sale, it's like the house is coming for sale. When's it coming for sale? I want to see it. I want to see it. And with an mm. apprentice, you're like, well, when's he going to start? When's he start? And the more he rides for everybody, and, and the, when they start to ask, when's he going to start? That's when yeah. it's it yeah. just made such a good, okay, mm. here we go. I was excited yeah. to see you. Yeah. And that's, that's what you want is to get that excitement. And I think. Uh, when I was an apprentice, that, that's kind of, I got lucky. That's what happened. I practiced, practiced, practiced. And they're like, when are you starting? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then coming out. So it's like, you know, so let's, let's go over a little more. I know you got acquainted with Angel Cadero. You got acquainted with Shane Sellers and Edward Pardo and all those guys help you with your, with your skills and stuff like that. And also Mike Smith also. So you learn a lot from these guys. You work, you, you wrote for some great Hall of Fame trainers too, like Alan Jerkins, Todd Pletcher, and all these guys, you know. So and the, the pledge of riding some great horses, going riding great stake races and stuff like that. How is it, you know, changing from riding, you know, great horses in Canada, but then you went right into you went to another level riding greater horses and winning great races and we're gonna great touch horses. a little bit on one of your 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 the horse that really put you on the map i would i want to say if if, if 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 i'm not saying the right thing just change that for me but talk about riding those great horses you know game on dude for sure put me on the map but one of the horses that was king horse that was just amazing was mind that bird mind that bird yes um, mm. I remember we was working with Dave Cody and, and the horse was just, we were working it and I was getting a lot of babies for him and he was lazy. And so I said, you know, Dave, can we have something that I can look at and, and chase? Maybe it'll wake him up. And we woke up and we were like, wow, this is like a really nice horse. And Dave was like, you know, the gallop out. And when I passed the horse in the lane, it was incredible to turn a foot. And then we had a horse. and. and each trainer has their own unique thing and some trainers get better horses because they have a different kind of success level they have owners that spend more money um but even a small trainer doesn't have a horse that's you know super well bred but they have the really horseman skills it's finding all those like there's diamonds in the rough everywhere mm -hmm. and uh it's fun to go and start you know riding for these younger kids some of i ride for um Trainer, his son just came from London and he was at the school for six years and he's really good. And he's only like, you know, 25. And then um, I ride for George Delgado, he's only 32 and he just he went to the Venezuelan school for four years and came here and he's doing like, incredible things that I, I've i only seen like really at the top. And it's taking, you know, like pressure or, you know, 
Baffert or it's just the way they train the horses and how they breeze them and, and Alan Jerkins and um, even uh, gosh, some great trainers in Canada, yeah. Catherine Phillips, uh, um, you know, Jimmy Day back in the day, but I didn't mind much with him, but it really is the breezing and how they, they care to the horses and how their outfits run. And I feel like the most peaceful outfits that are calm, they have a really good vibe and they really have a lot of success. And I have to gravitate to the trainers that how, when well, you can tell when they breathe, what kind of trainer they're going to be. And if it's being in their barn and you know, okay, this is someone I need to stay close to. Mm. Well, so, we have a video here of the 2011 Goodwood Stakes. We want to give you a show of it. Tell us how you think about it afterwards. Okay. Goes down. Jinsky sung the last one. Coming up. Pull in. Still sent on their way in the Goodwood. Along the inside, Trey Borachos is going for the lead with preamble now from the inside gate, Coyle. So Coyle will kick through on the inside to take the lead from Trey Borachos, preamble right there. Now Game On Dude moving fast on the outside. Game On Dude going to be forced to go wide, but goes up to put pressure on the leaders. They couldn't be going any quicker out here. Golden Atiz is back in the fifth spot. Then we drop back to Najinsky's song, who's eight lengths off the leaders. This match is second last, an awesome gem, the trailer, 12 off them. They head to the three-quarter pole and Trey Barachos on the inside and game on dude. Those two have sprinted away now. They open up to lead by four and a half. Coyle is quite content to let that pair go on with it in the third spot. Preamble inside of that. Golden it is, is now back in fifth and the Jimsky song moves through on his inside. Then another gap of four back to awesome gem and mismatches last. They strung out over a lot of ground as they go past the half mile pole and Game On Dude committed now to kick on for home. No turning back for Game On Dude. Goes on for home, takes the lead from Trey Barachos. It's five back to Coyle and let's see. Coyle is full of run though and Coyle now looms dangerous from third. Preamble is back in fourth. Then the Jinsky song. Golden it is. Awesome gem through far back. They come to the quarter pole. Game On Dude but Coyle has dead aim on him on the outside. Preamble is coming into the picture too. Awesome Jim getting rolling late. They come for home. Game on, dude. Hanging on to the lead. Coyle down the centre. Awesome Jim coming with a nice run on the outside. But Game on, dude. Still a run. He's finding more. Game on, dude. Goes on. Awesome Jim finishing stoutly down the centre of the track. But it's going to be Game on, dude to win it. And Game on, dude. And Chantel Sutherland have taken the good which takes Awesome Jim a fast closing second. Coyle just didn't go on. Now to settle for third, and mismatch was four. That was a great, yeah. great race. <laughs> yeah, and even like the fractions, you're like, how could she, how could he keep, keep going with the 45 for the half? But uh, that was a combination of, I think, lightning struck in that game on dude was, um, he, he could idle next to a horse and, and be taking a breather. Whereas most horses, they get there and they got to fight, fight, fight. He could take a breather and he would just wait on me and be like, go away. And I would just, I think you took the lead at the three eights pull and it just looked like he's had so much horse, but like you said, he was in neutral for a little bit there. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then even at the three pull, it was like, wow, I, I, you had another a gear, but also that track really did help him because that was a really fast track. Like it is here at Gulfstream, you know, speed just really carries. It's really hard to catch a speed horse on, you know, Gulfstream and definitely Santa Anita, and I think Santa Anita has helped me have so much success at Gulfstream. Like you got to get out of the gate, 
you know, really keep your horse forward in place, and then everyone seems to sit off you. And then with the track of how thick it is, it's hard for them to, to get you. Especially if you open up a couple of lengths early, it's really hard. You, you just break their hearts. And uh, I think that's what I, I love being on a front runner. Um, I do love coming off the face too, but you know, we have got a lot more um, traffic to maneuver. And I, I do have fun on the front. It's just, uh, I love to just go move, be really quiet. And, you know, when you think, move a little bit, and then you can wait again, think, move a little bit, and start cat and mouse. It's fun. That's what, time what, to need what, a trip. No, was it Seth that said he was your favorite horse? He had to be one of them for sure. Like, I had, I mean, we went to Dubai and that whole experience there. Uh, it was such a, I mean, when I was in the Breeders' Cup and I was second, it took me two hours to get back to the jock stream where the fans were crazy and they lined mm -hmm. up just to get an autograph. And I was like, this is crazy. And they loved Game on You. And they, yes. that day, they were all on Team Chantel. Mike Smith, how could you do that to her? <laughs> you know? and, uh, uh, it was just such an experience. So that was a really incredible journey. Just private planes, just mm -hmm. dinners, and like, wow, like mm -hmm. meeting famous people. And then, um, but there are other really cool things like Essence Scott Man for Audrey Capacetti. That thing yes. fast from the gate. Yes, I love that horse. <laughs> I love, he's like, quarter there, pow, he's on the gate, yeah. four in front, like, yeah. And then, <laughs> Saratoga, we almost won there. And then Mind That Bird was so much fun, too. And yes. Sugar Bear. Um, but with Mind That Bird, what, how how unlucky were you not to get in Renny the Derby? I mean, was it, did you ever have a chance or no? So we were going, and I was actually chasing Patrick as his leading rider. I had 13 mounts on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We rode every stake. Uh, John Bell is my agent. He took the call, and yes. they said we can't breeze it on Saturday, but we'll come and ride it. So we got the call. Cal Burrell breezed in the meantime, and I guess they were negotiating getting me off. I flew in. I was having breakfast at, at uh, with Mike Smith, and I got a call from my agent. He's like, "Pick up the racing form. We're taking you on. Took you off." And it was only twenty hours to race. You know? And. Oh, wow. uh, Sucks like so. And I watched it in the room with Emma, and I was doing the reality show called Jockey at the time, and uh, it, it was all live. And Emma was just like, "Dude, I'm so sorry." And I was like, oh, "God, you know." But I didn't know that. No, I just took a gamble to ask you that, but I didn't know you were that close. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I guess that was it still works. Thing. You know, double jocks now. Remember, we didn't we didn't do that then. Yeah. yeah. And now they do that because it's. I mean, they should have paid double jocks now. Yeah, they should have. Oh, happier with that. <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been nice to win a derby, but that would have been at least something. But you know how it goes. It's you know how is Alan Jerkins always would tell me. That's how the cookie crumbles. That's how you roll. Wow. It, you know. Yeah. 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 Game wants, it's gonna be a very tough game when you wants to be. But we're talking yeah. about Mike Smith. There, there was the 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 race. What was that race? The, the Battle of the X's. How'd that come about? <laughs> that, that race. Did, yeah, we did jockeys, and then um, Mike and I were engaged, and then you know, you know, sometimes people do silly things, and I guess the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. So we ended up breaking up, and then the track thought. You know, it was still a little fresh for me, but you know, it was, we wanted to do it better on the publicity would have been fun. Uh, jockeys wanted, to, I don't know if it was on jockeys, but they uh, they were like, would you want to do Battle of the Exes? Because they did Battle of the Sexes with Julie Crone. And I was like, I mean, it is Mike Smith and we had a high profile relationship because of jockeys and it was going to be great for the fans. Like girls, they had pins and there's like team Chantel, team Mike <laughs> and we did the post position draw and they had these two horses I'm like they're not well matched I rode the other horse and I I ended up getting the horse that I didn't want and if I had have been more savvy I would have said well if you're so good Mike why don't we switch <laughs> 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 so I just thought with the luck of the draw and then they said um 
well, Chantel, if you win, what do you want? I said, well, I think he's going to have to take me out for dinner. And then he's like, then I'm going to have to ask my girlfriend. <laughs> I went back to the room. I was crying. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to show that race then, eh, Shani? You don't want to bring back those memories. <laughs> That's a terrible race. I had no chance. Like, it wasn't even fair. I'm like, did anyone do the PPs on these two horses? Like, the 20 buyer difference. Like, what? So, anyway, whatever. It was fun, though. The crowd was crazy. They were like, so 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 But was it was great. so great to get the crowd into it. I mean, yeah. horse racing has been almost like a dying sport. We we're trying to get everyone back involved, families and younger generations. So to have that rivalry was great for the sport, I think. It was fun. Like the crowd was really not cheering for mine. So no. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, the girls were like, girl power. Got to win. And it was just really fun to see. And, you know, they throw the Mike Smith pin away and be like, Chanta all the way. Yeah. <laughs> But Would you do another Battle of the Sexes race against the same Mike Smith? And oh, yeah. Let's see if you'd do it for sure. Oh, yeah, but I'm picking the horse. <laughs> 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 I can't <grab> right now. <laughs> Maybe some well, racetrack will pick up that idea. Yeah. <laughs> let's show that race if we have it, right? Just to bring back some, some memories for Shani. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Just introduce this show. Battle of the Sexes, the X's <laughs> to our viewers. All the friends, guys in the jocks room is Mike. He's been in the situation, you know, being in a big race hundreds of times more than her. The opportunity to decide things in a personal relationship uh, sometimes never happens for you. You leave a bad breakup and you never get a chance to go back and settle things. That is not the case for Mike Smith and Chantel Sutherland. They're going to decide it right here in the Battle of the X's. And away they go to a perfect start. Mike Smith definitely wants the early lead. He's sending Joker Face along. He wanted that early lead, and he's going to go wide off the inside rail, try to intimidate Chantel into not going with him early on. And certainly Mike Smith's got it all his own way early because it is Joker Face, and he's just taking them along, ears pricked, not in any hurry at all. Let's see, Chantel Sutherland not playing his game, though. She's going up to put some pressure on him, and Parable is now running up alongside of him. Chantel said, I'm not going to hand you this race, Mike. You're going to have to kick on, and surely Mike Smith has kicked on now. And now they quicken as they head past the 5'8s. Joker Face and Mike Smith lead it by a length. But Chantel Sutherland in a perfect striking position and in fact now only a half a length back. So the two of them with a half mile to go now. It looks like we're going to be in for a real super race here. Mike Smith is starting to ask Joker Face to kick away now. He's sending him along on the lead. Chantel Sutherland also having to get to work now as Parable suddenly drops two lengths back. They're coming towards the quarter pole in the Battle of the Xs. And Mike Smith is looking solid right now because Mike Smith and Joker Face are now opening up. Chantel Sutherland's had a go to the whip, but I'm afraid Parable is not really responding. They come for home. Mike Smith shakes the reins now at Joker Face. Joker Face is clear by falling. Chantel Sutherland riding for her life on Parable, but he just doesn't have it. And Mike Smith, too crafty, too experienced. And Mike Smith has won the battle of the X's on Joker Face. Chantel Sutherland tried as hard as she could, but Parable just didn't have it. Well, that settles that. Mike Smith aboard Joker Face is the better half of the X's. No dinner and wine for, for Chantel. And, and she lost this race early on, right, Simon? Joker yeah. face, getting the lead, and kind of floating out on Parable into that first turn. Yeah, we'll hopefully look at a replay into the first turn. Maybe we can get Mike Smith and Chantel to have the battle of the X's at the Barbados Turf Club at the Garrison Savannah next year. <laughs> yeah, all right. Chantel will go around that paddock, man. Miss the wall. <laughs> you know, you know what's so funny about getting the name of um, Mike Smith's horse, Joker Face. <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. Chantel, I bet you Mike would have the guts to go around that paddock, man, with the wall like you would, huh? Yeah, I don't know if he. <laughs> what did he do? He go what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So John, you should give him a call and invite him up and see what he says. <laughs> yeah, you never know. One yeah. of the things I, I want to jump to is back to Game On Dude. What's the race that what was 2011? No, no, that was in the classic when we had the in big inquiry. Yeah, that was crazy because it's the first time I rode him and um, I, you know, floated out a little bit, but because they had initial contact and they touched my horse's hind end, it turned me in and it looked like I did all the damage, but when you really watched it again. Um, they made the contact with you first. Yeah. So they knocked your back end out. Yeah. So what happened was the stewards were like, it was a long inquiry and the fans, I, I messed up the pick six. And uh, the fans were like, I just got to California and I was praying that it went my way because this is my first mountain with Bob uh, and I really wanted to ride for him. But then when I did win, we went in the winter circle and I had the whole stand, boo, I never heard boo. And I was like, wow. Oh. And then when I got off the horse, three security guards said, you're going to stay in between the three of us and we're going to run back to the doctor's room. I go, run? Why are we running? And he's <laughs> like, guys, you really, like, you screwed up the pick six. And I'm like, well, it's like, this is just horse racing. He's like, no, there's some serious handicappers here. So yeah. we ran and a guy came to take me out and the guy knocked him down. And I went and wow. security like, take me to my car that evening. Wow. Wow. I did, a lot of the public don't get to hear all these difficult yeah. stories, huh? And once uh, again, yeah. guys, it's a sport. That would never happen but... in Canada, though, eh? Never. No, that would never happen in Canada. No. <laughs> no, because the other horses were crazy that day. The horses that yes. run one, two, three, four, they were all like um, double-digit odds on those all three of those before horses. They're like wow. serious yeah. odds on them, yeah. Yeah, mine was you know? 50 to 1, so nobody yeah. picked one. Yeah, the odds yeah. were, yeah. And I mean, but... Bob was really working, working the the camera really good that day. You know, I mean, if you go back and watch the the, the interview, yes, he, stuff, was. And it was, he was working the camera pretty good. So I don't know if the the stewards were seeing anything, but he was working them pretty good. <laughs> I think I heard him yeah. say that the stewards wouldn't take his call. He was trying to call the stewards yes, because the other yeah, guys were thinking good. that's what he was doing, that he was working yeah. the stewards on the phone, but he wasn't because he, he he didn't no. get through to them. You know. No, the stewards would never take their call. I don't think the stewards, well, the stewards do take a trainer's call, but maybe, I don't think you're, I think you're right. He couldn't get through. No, yeah. because he had asked you what you had said to the stewards and stuff like that. And you were talking to him in the interview when they were talking. But the, a lot yeah. of the other guys, you know, were like saying that he's over there working the the, the stewards all the time, but he wasn't, you know what I mean? But they hate yeah. your horse. And then I worked a lot of horses for John Sadler. And the next day he told my agent, all those calls, they're take them back. Wow. Yeah, oh. ride her Cause he was so wow. upset that his horse got beat. Wow. Yeah. So I was on, I was in, I think I had a year suspension with him because of that. And then later on I did ride for him, but he was very upset that day. Yeah. Cause it, it, it lasts over 12 minutes that, that inquiry. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. It was a 12 minute so inquiry. Was, yeah. That's what they read and said. It was 12 minute inquiry and it was a two to one vote. You know, so. And you know, every racetrack I've ever gone to, something crazy happens like that. Like I went, so I went there, that happened to me. But when I went to New York, I, my first time in New York, there was a trainer named Colin O'Brien. And he is Johnny Velezquez's wife's father. And I went, I worked a bunch of horses for that morning. And he's the little Irish guy. And he's like, oh, Chantal, it's so great to have you here, you know? And then, <laughs> so... After that, I'm going to do this media thing that Chantal's coming to New York. And so I had to drive on this freeway. It's Hampstead Turnpike. And it's like four lanes, two lanes this way, two lanes the other way. And all the cars are parked, you know, on the side of the road. And I see this little old man, I see this lady, and he goes out to get into his car and opens the door. And I'm like, oh my God, like I can't move over. And you're going fast on this turnpike. And I can't move over because his car's there. And the guy didn't look. And all of a sudden, pow, I hit him with my mirror on my car. The mirror went flying. The guy went flying. I'm like, oh my God, wow. I just killed someone. I pull over. He's about to fall into traffic. So I put him on my knee and I hang on to the bumper of the car because now he's in the front of the bumper. Yeah. And I pull him and he turns his head. It's Colin O'Brien. I was like, wow. what the hell? <laughs> Chantel and I'm 
like, yeah, call him. He's like, uh, so they call the ambulance. The ambulance comes. He goes to the ambulance. I'm bawling my eyes out. The wife is crying. I thought maybe I killed the guy or something. They take him. He gets out of the, he gets out of the ambulance. Everything's fine. We go, I go to the truck the next day and everybody's like, you can't kill that Irish. You just give him a bruise. He'll be fine. And they're like, he didn't do anything. He's had a bruise. And I was like, thank you, God. Wow. That was crazy. So then everybody on the track was like, he was Charles L. Sullivan and like, oh my God, she tried to kill Colum. They're like, you can't kill him. He's Irish. And then, <laughs> thank God he's okay. And then I just fixed my mirror and thank God they didn't sue me because I was so scared that Americans sue, sue everybody. But he was really nice. And I think I paid for the ambulance. I think that was a great impression of the Irish accent that you got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, she did a bit of an acting already too, Brent. So, you know, Chantel, <laughs> she did Tell a bit of Tell us about acting. the jockeys reality show. We saw that a couple seasons, was it? Yeah, we. it was really, it was fun. And um, the I love the producers. That was really cool. And I think... You know, at the end, it was getting a little expensive to produce, but I, it was a really cool thing that they did. And it's nice to look back and have that history. Um, but they have, the, the producers did a great job. Like they had the, you know, Joe Talamo segment with his you know, young fiance. And then then they had, but then things got real. Like when Joe uh, went to the Gotham mm -hmm. and remember Jeff Mullins got taken down because he, you know, I don't know if there was something that happened with the testing, and so they then they would they actually got in fight with one of the producers because his lawyer didn't want Joe to talk, and like it, it was really real. A lot of it. It's sometimes they would have a dinner where they would give you like a piece of paper and it would say, "Ask Chantel about having a baby," and I'm like, "Why does everyone keep asking me about having a baby with Mike?" You know, and so Mike and I got to put it, but then you learn, okay, well, if they're doing it to meet us in other scenarios, they're, they're doing it. And then you kind of just go along with it. Sometimes it's like that, but a lot of times it wasn't scripted either. Uh, I think there was one time we all were spitting whiskey on a fire to see how that went. And that was not smart, <laughs> but you know, put a bunch of jockeys together. <laughs> so I watched the episode uh, seasons a couple of years ago. And as an ex writer, it was quite realistic. I thought it was, very educational to the younger crowd as well that they think it's all glory and guns a blazing but it's actually a very difficult job for us ex jockeys or you yeah. resurrecting your career now congratulations on that thank you yeah i think the whole i thought when kayla straw showed her struggle that was really real and you saw the backside and you don't just see like the kentucky derby you know that's when we get in our industry, it's all wrapped up in a bow for all the fans to see, but there's a lot more dirty work before that. Yeah. And wake up in the morning at 3 30, 4 o'clock, and it's, you know, you've got to get up. You've got to keep, you know, you got to, if you don't you use it to work, it. you know, that's so, yeah, I, I thought it was a good show. I, and a lot of young writers, you know, saw the show and became, it got into the industry because of it. So that was good. Do you see any other reality shows coming out well, in the horse racing world? or There might be. So Formula One, that show that they did on Netflix, they yeah. came and interviewed a bunch of us uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, wow, so that recent. Uh, put a pilot or, or put some interviews together and you know maybe put it on Netflix. Um, I hope something like that great happens, but... I know that when we did the HBO TV show Luck, um, it got dicey with uh, the expense of how expensive it is to do horse scenes with like the cameras. And mm -hmm. then also, you know, that got shut down a little bit because there was, uh, you know, a couple of horses that got injured and, and, you know, PETA got involved and it just got really tough to continue it. So they did shut, you know, they discontinued it. So I think people are reluctant because it's animals. And you have to really be careful with that. I think in the first episode of HBO Luck, it was a trick horse that pretended it broke down. And a lot of people freaked out at the, uh, we went to that theater downtown Hollywood. And uh, I didn't know that was the first scene, the horse breaking down. And I remember seeing the horse do the trick on the track, which was incredible. Like such wow. a talented horse. 
and uh, how they put the silver all over the horse so they can, you know, make it look like the horse got loose and it, incredible how they, uh, what I saw, but I think that freaked people out and all the girls were crying in the bathroom and it was like, but it was a trick horse. But That was back in February, 2012, I think on HBO. I had five episodes yeah, of that episodes, television yeah. series. Yeah, and yeah. they met Nick Nolte and uh, Dustin, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, yeah. Them. It was really cool, and it, it was just cool to see all the trick people and all the, um, what's the word I'm looking for when people come in, uh, stunt people. Uh, I had my own trailer. Like, it was really wow. cool on it like I felt you know wow <laughs> it'd be awesome to have you as a director of sorts of such a reality show because you're the animal lover the horse lover maybe your perspective could give a much more favorable um reality of the horse I saw one of your interviews horses love to run and a lot of the animal rights people don't think they'll do but the animal the horse the equine athlete just loves to run. Don't you think you'd be a great person to maybe direct a show which would focus on the highlights that the animals do love this racing? Well, I, I thank you. And I have talked to the producer who did Jockeys and she said she'd rather do a show where there, you talk to more about handicapping and what you look at on the horse, what you see in the paddock, uh, their mannerisms, how they come over. Because people, the handicapping part of it is the most popular part of it that they see that is something that a reality show could actually exist on. And I guess she got the feedback she got was from the handicapper side. Like people love right. that. And I think with HBO, they had that section of seven guys who were degenerate gamblers and how they like found a horse in the backfield. And they're like, you know, they're like, well, if we put it in this race and we get this trainer and, you know, we could bet on it, and then we could bet on this one. We could do a, a handy, a box, an exactor. And people really love that part of it. So, I mean, and it would be cool. You know, I think people like a feel good story too. So, and there are many feel good stories. Uh, it's just, right. I, I hope so one day. That would be so cool. It'd be very interesting and it takes you into a whole different realm. I think. I read here that you have a pilot's license as well. Yeah. When I, when I was 17, I told my dad, I'm like, dad, my mom was a flight attendant. So I said, well, maybe I want to be a flight attendant if someone travel. And my dad said, what? You're not going to be any flight attendant. If you're going to be anything, you're going to be a pilot. So I went, did my Cessna 152, got my radio license. I went wow. for, um, a couple of lessons and he did um, stalling in the sky. They just turned the engine off. <laughs> As if like, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I was like, help me, help me pull it back up. He's like, well, no one's going to be here when you're on your own. <laughs> but Shad, you're riding a thousand pound horse among how many different um, horses and you get that done and no problem. What's the difference yeah. up there in the sky? Yeah, I like to feel the ground underneath. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And tell us well, also about your experience appearing in the 2004 TV commercial for Equine Watches, as well as being chosen People Magazine's 100 Most Beautiful People. How was that? I don't know how they picked that. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't believe this. And I'm like, is this once a month or is it like once no. a year? I'm like it, was, it was a very and good then, accomplishment and for your yeah, no, prestige. Was, yeah, it was, it was fun. I was so and I was like, I can imagine. I, it was cool. It was cool to have them come and do the photos. Um, I think the most fun photo I did was the Vanity Fair one with Bo Derek. That was heart wrenching, scary. I think I was sweating. It was nerve wracking and how that was going to be received. But I think yeah. it turned out really good. And Bo was so awesome. And just having the horse come up in the elevator and he had to go on the green screen. Um, so that's some cool, cool things that I got have gotten to do. Yeah, excellent. A lot of excitement, man. A lot of excitement. And you, you were also the first woman to ride a, the Dubai World Cup also, Shani. 
Yeah, so when we went over to Dubai, thoughts that if we're in a death um, or anyone there, you're not riding So I was praying that no one would get a death threat because women can't ride professionally at that time. We had to get a special visa, and I have the visa of permission from Sheikh Mohammed Amr to do ride in that race against the guys. And uh, we got it, we went over there, and we landed. And I got a phone call from Tim Yakim, who's a chicken training for Bob then. And he said, Chantal, you're going to have to come to the track in the morning and get on the horses. Because two things happened. Bob had a heart attack. He's in the hospital. And um, the guy who showed up to gallop, he's gone missing. He went out one night and didn't come back. So oh. I was like, oh, my God. And he goes, but you have to tell everyone when you get there, Bob just wants you to test out the track. That's what the media wow. is. That's the story we're telling the media. I'm like, because we don't want to in panic. Bob's already had a heart attack. Now he's got to get him to survive. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, sure. So that was the story. Yeah, I just Bob wants me to test out the track. And they're like, did you know he had a heart attack? And he had it off the plane. And uh, he, it started when he was getting off the plane. So it was just crazy. And uh, and it was just really hot. And, and they had the horses so far away that they, they Bob wanted to ship the horse. To the track because it was a mile and a half walk then they train and the mile half back so it's like really it's like four miles a day it's hot and i guess it's just what he wanted to do and it just it didn't work out we uh it, yeah we got i mean we were at the gate bob wanted the 14 hole i was like i really wanted the one hole because the post because it starts on the turn and i'm like right post even if i'm in there a long time i'll get him out and he's he's speed it took me to get over from 14 horses on the turn it's gonna be really challenging mm -hmm. and so that gate we went in the gate and it's not as sturdy as ours i don't know if they have like the, the, the thing that puts it breaks it one of the horses tried to break through and it shook and when it shook came on he got tickled and you can get tickled and he sat down and i go no 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 it's not like at home. They don't. The guy just goes, and I was behind everybody, and I'm like, oh my god. So then I remember looking and game on dude. You know how he pulls. He's like, I got to get through. So I remember uh, Frankie Victoria he was back. He's like, go girl. And then Jose was on us. Like, go girl. And they were being everyone was running through. It was crazy, and I was like, oh my god. They're like, go go go. And then I got to the front, and then here comes the shake horse just blew by me. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, that was a wild day. Mm. What, what How many of, other countries have you ridden in? Like, they've been... Uh, Japan, Hong Kong, Sweden. Um, where else I rode? Uh, England, Barbados, yeah. uh, Jamaica, Trinidad. Wow. Um, that travels. I think that's it so far. Canada, the United States, mm -hmm. all over the U.S. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, any special experiences racing in England? Uh, I loved England. I think there's a race I was on the turf and you, you go in the race and they talk a lot more. And Haley Turner was in the race, Frankie's in the race. And we came around the turn and I guess I heard Frankie say something about my bottom. And I was <laughs> like, you're married now, what the hell? So he kept saying this. Hey, we go around swindly bottom, swindly bottom. I was talking my bottom. I'm like, what? So I'm like, crazy. What were you saying in the race about my bottom? He goes, this swindly bottom. What is this swindly bottom? It's a turn, a turn, yeah. It's a turn. 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 So I have nothing to do with my butt. I guess that's a European thing. Do you guys call it a swindly bottom? No. Swindly bottom? It's the turn. In Barbados, they call bot seas. <laughs> <laughs> I we have to get that muted. Or... <laughs> <laughs> what I, what I've noticed, but Shanta has a wide range of accents. I, I, I mean, you've seen to acquire some real great accents along the way. Also, for writing for all these places, you seem to have the Barbadian one hands down. Irish, yeah, we I give you know. that. And the English, English no. Ah, so, like. <laughs> 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 you, 
There's a lot of other ones I shouldn't know. <laughs> That's a shout out to all the I, I, I went to Hong Kong, China, and they, it's a place called uh, Happy Valley, and it's in the city, and there are a lot of fans. So I would walk, and they would say, Oh, you need to stop, round eye, round eye, stop. And I was like, they called me round eye. And round eye. I was like, okay, uh, <laughs> that's new. And then um, they said, you stop. We got 30 seconds, take photo, and you walk again, walk again. And I was like, okay. And then they say, round eye, stop. Oh, round eye, go. Round eye, stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> the camera people are banging into each other, and my name there was round eye. Time. Round eyes. Wow. Round eyes. <laughs> wow. That's wow. a good, beautiful thing about traveling, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, from traveling so much, which which place did you really like, though? Did you like Europe best or Hong Actually, Kong? I honestly, I loved loved China. If I could have ever gone back there, I mean, things are a little crazy right now, but yeah. It, the way that they had a lot of South African jockeys had okay. a contract where you get a million dollars and then you get your own penthouse and then you make money on top of that. Wow. Such a wicked system. Yeah. Wow. I, like if I could get a contract to ride here, I would be gone because it's just so unique and the shopping and just the, it's so beautiful. Like you would, the city is crazy, like congested. Mm -hmm. But then you go outside and shut in these beautiful places and it's so old the history and i mean i would have loved to just immerse myself in that culture uh england you have to travel so far back to yeah. back so you're mm -hmm. living in a car so i didn't want that mm -hmm. and then japan was so expensive and japan was very you cannot talk to a trainer you don't even have the honor or or what's the word i'm looking for you're not even you don't have the status to communicate with enough. Them. Wow, so you're not wow. You're good enough. Why, just why is that, Shani? Why is that though? No, just their culture, old people. Uh, they have they have a hierarchy, and you just it just. I remember I was like, one of the horses got hurt. I was like, no, 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 you gotta stop. And they're like, no, no, we cannot talk to you. Like, you cannot. And I'm, and they're like, konnichiwa, arigato, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what? Like, what do you mean I can't talk to him? Like, no, 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 no. Like, they're just, it's a, uh, I guess it's a respect thing. It's, uh, trainers are so here and the rest of people are here. Maybe oh, that wow. was my experience, but that's what happened. And so I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. Your communication goes through who the, there's an assistant or? Yeah, there's an assistant who's allowed to talk to him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Well, you, live, you live and, and learn all the Dubai, time. Huh? The Dubai, when you're in Dubai, the men won't talk to you at all. Zero. Wow. Wow. Like, I'll go and try and t say hello, or if I had to, I, at the hotel, I wanted to get a, a towel or a toothbrush or say you forgot something, will not talk to you. You have to get it. And I was like, this is so crazy. And then you see, you know, the women in the burqa, and they walk, you know, five steps behind their husband, and the kids walk in front of them. And you're just like, yeah, I don't know. Different cultures, huh? Yeah, and then they asked me when I was there, would you have even embrace your culture by letting you ride here? We would like to uh, do a magazine photo cover with you wearing the burqa. And uh, my PR agent was like, no way, don't do it. And then I was just, I said, well, I kind of had to decline, but you have to be very careful how you decline in those yes. as you can really insult them. Yes. So I was like, well, maybe we'll do it another day. And I kept pushing it off. And then we just didn't get around to it. Yeah, you really can say no to men in Dubai. It's not even, uh, it's not, it's not okay. You really, you just gotta be sensitive to how their religion is and how they live. And, and you don't wanna, you know, you gotta cover your shoulders, uh, be respectful, because they will get upset. So is it right. safe to say it's a place that you, you're not really too fancy to go back to, right? I mean, Dubai is so gorgeous, but mm. don't scratch the surface too much. Like, there's mm. things you don't maybe want to know. And mm. I just, like, I don't, as a woman, and I love the relationship that that we, you and I can talk. And mm -hmm. Men and women have such a fun relationship because it's so cool to 
see different perspectives and have a brother and have, yeah. you know, and in Dubai, in the Middle East, it was women. But you can imagine your whole life, you never get to have a buddy as a woman. Mm -hmm. And you never get to talk to them. And mm -hmm. you just, they're only a wife. And you never have that friendship. And women stick with women and men stick with men. And I don't know, I think you're missing out so much because it's... <laughs> Yeah. I agree. Men are pretty cool. <laughs> what a, what We're good, but I love the mix, male and female. Yeah. I don't know if I would ever be comfortable with that, not having yeah. communication it's hard to with. You know, being a woman and knowing that those women have covered their hair their whole life. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to be beautiful like women to learn the game. What yeah, a journey, Chani. We I was actually in a hotel room with uh, some Lebanese women. And a lady from Dubai, she was in a smaller town. And when they're in the they're in the hotel room, they will take off their um, their burqa. And they were, she was relaxed. And she said, mm -hmm. my dream is to ride a horse. And I'm like, well, just get on the horse. She, she goes, no, I will be murdered if I ever wow. sit on the horse. It's not allowed. Wow. I'm like, what? It's just, you're like, no way. Can never sit on a horse. Not even like in their back, yeah, in the backyard to jump on me. She'd be so and it's like even if it's just the brain can so like in North America because coming from Barbados we didn't have a lot of female grooms and there how many female grooms do we say there's a bit of right now Sean I see a few young girls around now I mean no. about three four you yeah. know what I mean five the most when we went to Canada, we see so much more females yes. involved in the game, you know what I mean? And to see that okay. was pretty impressive. You know, I was kind of, I was like, my time when I was writing, Sonia Perkins was writing also. So by the time I got to Canada, I was a custom of, of women kicking guys' ass all the time writing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't a big thing, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a big thing to see Chantel Southern, you know, <laughs> doing we, what she did. Sonia yeah. Perkins did it to us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we Chantel, 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 Emma, and and uh, Francine were the first female writers to reach over a thousand wins to in Canada, yes. right? I mean, yes. for us to come and see that too, right? And I mean, and that Emma is still, Emma, Emma, Emma and Chantel is still. And, yeah, and she's embraced her, you yeah, know, her her gender, her everything. And yeah, I I love. Uh, I mean, it's been awesome to watch Emma, and yeah. I just love that Canada is so open like that, just yeah. multicultural, mm -hmm. and just there's. I feel there's no sexism because there's the whole jobs room is like the same like we have just as much as the guys it's very yeah. equal yeah. and they make it very important that it's fair and, yes. and, and there's transparency and I love that about Woodbine and I think a lot more tracks around here could you know really use that transparency because it keeps things really integrity you have to have that because when you start losing that that's when you know things it's just not good when the tracks are so integrity. Yeah, so a little bias. A really role model in integrity and a role model in transparency with the stewards, with how they show everything, like all the things that they're doing with the tapita, like how far they went into it, what they're testing. They really make that extra effort. And I think the fans love it. The handicappers love it. It's, mm -hmm. they, they, a lot of tracks they follow their lead. How do you like uh, racing on Tepita and other dirt tracks or even the turf? Which are your preferences? I like the Tepita a lot. I think it's a more heady ride. You gotta be uh, more patient. Um, but I would say though, the, the Tepita here can be a little unpredictable. Like some days it's, you can win on the front and then some days it's from way Same way thing out. here too, same so thing here like, too. Is it? Same yeah, thing here too. I try that really dissect uh, Emma's mind when she was here about we were going over the heat, the temperature, the water. She's like, it's like a candle. You do this, you do that. She was really, and I was like writing down everything. And, and I put in, I have notes on my iPad of like how much rain last night did we get? And then I'll go jogging and you can see what the tire track when it's packed in. It's way easier to run on when you go off it and it's really laboring on your legs. So I really try to get and figure that out and then so i like it i do really like it i like there's no kickback and i personally love the grass i love the grass because i love that a horse can come from off it and have a quick turn of foot 
and the corners are tighter. I think I am very good. One of my things that I'm good at is really corner and tight. And I think that's from the training of the woodbine. Uh, also, it's with the woodbine training. Barbados is that tighter turns. And I learned on those tracks. And to the point down to Winnipeg, that's a, a bull ring. So I, and I also, Gardner Farms, that's a bull ring track. And that's where I grew up. So I learned how to change the lead early into the turn and really cut it tight and almost touch the rail. And then hold my turn out of the turn because here it's banked a little bit and it will project you forward. So you got to really hang on to that line, get low and click into it and it'll give you two strides and it'll just like shoot you. And I learned that in California with uh, Tempest Normal uh, when we rode at Los Alamitos, he said that. He said, that's how you got to ride this turn. And it's that the turn tight at the end and it really can really take you to an advantage. But if you let it push you the other way, it'll throw you out, out wide. So you got to really you got kind to of figure it out, but so yeah, I love I love turf and um, I like the dirt. If you got a violent you know, eating dirt and getting kicked back, horses don't like it. Even if you're on your favorite, you, you got to get it really close. And when you take that chance to get really close, if they put the brakes on, you're on hill. So in the dirt, you always want to be smooth. You can't like on turf go back and break and go back and start again. So. But then when you're further back, you get run into it. So you gotta either go outside or really get tight on the rail. It's more tricky coming off the pace. So front runner on the dirt, any horse on the turf, and to beat it doesn't matter. Like a golf gym, I mean, you you guys are always change it because you you can ride there's three surfaces now, and you and on the day of racing you can have five mounts and you can ride what. Two or three on one surface, two on the other. You know, it's yeah. always changing what you're doing out there every time you go out there now, which is so sweet and competitive. Because just like here in Canada now, our all triple crown is on three different surfaces. And down there, you guys now have three different on a disc card. You have races running on three different surfaces in one day. Yes. And I think, like with Woodbine, it rains there, it's cold, you have weather changes. When it rains here, it's torrential. So they have to take it mm -hmm. off the grass. So we, yeah. at least we can still run on the tapita because there was a time that they were running on the dirt it came off the before we had tapita and it really would uh golf stream puddles these big puddles and uh there's a reflection because it gets really sunny here after the rain and the horses jump the puddles and i mm -hmm. one guy you know the horse got majorly injured and fell off i went right beside him i go playing but now we don't learn when that happens. We go right to Tapita, so that never happens. Because the horses, they don't see, they don't know. It's just, it looks to them like a mirror or it's a pool. You know, mm -hmm. you can't understand what they actually see, but they jump them. And it's really dangerous for everyone in the race. So mm -hmm. I'm glad, you know, for that reason, it is safer to have Tapita and to have that option. I think it's, uh, I think it's great that they did it. I know, you know, a lot of handicappers don't like betting it, but if they would do, they they do and would buy and tell them how much they dug into it with the the harrows, and mm -hmm. and did they dig into it and with the rain, how much saturation did it get? Just tell them, and then let them make because you have to look with their own stats. And then they just want to beat each other, and the guy who does more homework is the guy who's gonna win. So, yeah, that's know. all part of the handicapping game, right? Eh? So yeah, it's, just it's, another. It's, such a minor thing for them to do and to and to get all that money back in the handle and that's what tracks need they need handle yeah well i know our track like last week our track in the morning was very quick and in the afternoon we had three track records in the afternoon that same week you know on the worksheet it was a horse working 45 in the morning and it carried wow. the afternoon i mean you had two horses running 107 last week on the we tapita. on the tapita yeah wow. it was that wow. quick last week you know what i mean so our tapita changes so much up here and you yeah. can find you know the first couple of races of the day it might run one win by the time the afternoon it changes it's got to be the temperature and how much you need, how exactly exactly right? exactly yeah. you know what i mean so it's amazing how how it changes but i mean they were running so fast last week it was like holy moly yeah you know so well it sounds like you Chantel and even Emma did a lot of research on how much rain fell last night and we were just <laughs> talking about the temperature of 
the, the surface that the TP is sitting on and the actual temperature outside, does yeah. all of that have significant changes? I think from what you just said, it does. For sure, like the heat here, uh, it's very humid here, but it evaporates quick when the sun hits it. And then if you add the wind, because it can be really windy here, then it's gonna dry out faster. But with the torrential rain, like there's one night it poured, like torrential, everything's flooded. So I knew the track, first three races is gonna be fast. So I went to the paddock and I'm like, look, we're going. We're sending from the gate because a lot of jockeys here will send because they're not going to send on the dirt, and then they they're scared of the to be as they all take back and then everybody gets shuffled back. So I said, we're we're clear in the field and we are going. And I almost won on the lead, and, but the horse that beat me was like right behind me. So there was a, you know a speed favor in the first three races, and then with the heat, then it got to middle pace, and then by the end of the last race, it's like middle to off the pace. Stopping. Right. But Chantel, I gotta ask you this. What the chances are race fans in Canada will ever see you riding in Canada again? Especially now we have two turf tracks. Oh, how is that? I'm curious to ride that inner turf track. How yeah, I, I, I heard you say you like the turf, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me. I'd love to come. I would love to come. Anyone, I would love to go ride back there and either the turf course to PETA, just just to go back home and ride again and uh you know ship in for a race or two it'd be fun so you won't stay for a little longer you won't give them their presence for a, a season or two i don't know about that but i definitely know if i am gonna come it's gotta be july june or july because hey, i can't take a cold hell no <laughs> okay. come on shiny you're born in winnipeg didn't you born in winnipeg yeah. winnipeg Somebody just sent me a picture here, and it looks like the trophy you're holding. It says 1998 here. I don't know if you guys can see it here. Can we see this? No, no. Send it to me in WhatsApp, Leroy, okay. and I'll all right check it out. You have some good comments from some of our guys already coming on. Um, all the comments coming in but somebody did ask comment. Chantel if she had any plans to come back to Woodbine similar yes. to what we asked but yes. also a class act she is most definitely <laughs> great she's still well loved in Canada man uh -huh. well loved yeah buddy you know sure. oh. yes yes yeah yeah you know in 2000 2010 Shani in in national earnings listed you were 13 on the list I don't know where they get these algorithms because I'm like, where is all that money? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, statistics speaks for itself, you know what I mean? And when and it, it, that's what they print out here and show, you know what I mean? Like 2007 was bad because you were 77 on the list. But I mean, 2010, it says 13. So you, you had a good time that, that, that yeah, year. That Came on, dude. That's when we did. Three years That's where you made your money. You know what I mean? Yeah, cool yeah. Stuff. So, yeah. I mean, but like, like I said from the beginning when I when we started the show, your lifetime earnings is fifty five million, in, and you're still riding. So that's it's still added to that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, but remember, that's horse earnings. In that's horse earnings. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I understand. I understand. Very misleading that, but... to the average um, yeah. human. Yeah. California taxes were terrible. It's another reason I came here because there's no uh, state income tax here. So it's a little helpful, but mm -hmm. yeah, taxes ugh. in Canada, I shouldn't even complain about taxes, but you guys, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shame on me. You guys, I don't know, it's Trudeau. Uh, I don't want to get too political, oh. but wow. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's not even go there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, Chantel. It says there, Chantel Sutherland took home the trophy awarded to the winner of the ladies' foot race. Do so you remember at that? Woodbine, they would have a race on the grass, and it was we all the people would go in the gate, and they would make. Okay, all that's what it was. Tyler, Tyler said that to me. Tyler Gaskin sent it to me. Oh, that's funny, and. <laughs> It was funny because everybody took off, but by the time they got to the seven eighth pole, they all quit, and I just kept running. Oh, your fitness, your fitness showed up. Your fitness, your hard work and fitness showed up. 
Yeah. Okay, talking about foot race. Talk about foot race. Your father was in standard breads, and you had you rode a standard bread against in a race against um, what was it, right? In Australia. It was, no, the it was the trotting time the trial. The trial. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Under saddle at Meadows Racetrack. Yeah, yes. You've done so much, though. I, uh, what? How do you get to do that? I mean, that is not something that. I know. I guess I had a, Gary Stevens White was my public relations agent, and I had a website. So people yes. would go to the website and say, "Would well, Chantel be interested in doing this?" And then she would say, "Do you want to go ride a trotter?" And okay. I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> my dad might want me to go. I'm like, Dad, do you want me to do this? Yes, I want you to do it. So we all went, and it was hard. Because the yeah. harder you pull, the faster they go, but you can't hit or push like a jockey. Yes, so yes. Hit and just pull, pull, pull. And if you let go, they break into a gallop and you got to yes. again. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> Emma did it too, didn't Emma did it too? I don't know. I didn't know. She wasn't there. No, that but, one. You no, but that she, Emma, Emma did it here too. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all I can say is I, I worked with Trotters one season in Canada and I almost didn't come back to Woodbine. I, I was really enjoying just sitting back and doing this thing, this buggy thing. But it was great though. It's fun. I love Yeah, it. if you're on the cart, I was on his back. Yeah, <laughs> well, I know. Well, well, let's see the video, Shiny. Let's see the video. Let's see the video, let's see the video Shiny. Weird. Let's see the video. <laughs> you can see I'm struggling. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Gate okay, swings around the turn and there they go. They're off and racing, going right out. DW's New York Yank this time, Chantel Sutherland and Cruz. Into the turn on top of the prompter by about seven lengths. As they go over to the first eight, under 15 seconds this time. DW's New York Yank has a mark of 151 and 3 at Pocono earlier this year. World record at Yonkers, 54 and 3 on the half. Opening quarter at 28. The timing's perfect this time for DW's New York Yank. At Pocono, they went over to the quarter in 28 and 1, this time 28 flat. For DW's New York Yank, on top of the prompter, driven by Dave Palum by about four and a half. Into the turn. Going to the half mile marker. DW's New York Yank, halfway home, 57 and 3. Second panel, 29 and 3 as Dave Palum moves the prompter up a bit closer. Five eighths mark in about one twelve. Now Pallone will edge closer and closer from here on home, but never must stick the head in front of DW's New York Yank. Three quarters, one twenty seven and three. Backside, thirty seconds flat. We'll see what DW's New York Yank has coming home as Pallone moves ever so closer with the pacing prompter. And down the stretch they come. Chantel, Sutherland, Cruz, DW's New York Yank. Let's bring them home. Going to beat 159 and 1. 159. A new North American record. Chantel Sutherland Cruz scores in the time trial in 159, breaking the mark. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Like, when you let go, he gallops. So yeah. It but was hard. How tired was your arms holding him like that, Shiny? Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, wow. I was like, do it for your dad, do it for your dad, do it for your dad, you don't have to do it again. He'll make me do it again. I'm like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> and then the guy behind me is like, ha, ha. I'm like, ha. 
<laughs> I mean, as, as, as soon as you pass away, you got up really quick and got that uh, breath, eh? <laughs> Wow. I love the posture going down the backside. You had your knees tucked in and you could feel your arms. I was trying to eat every inch of my body. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was a workout, man. Wow. Yeah. No, but I mean, you've done so much, though. I I, I didn't realize you, you've done so much your career off the track, off the, or actually, say off the beaten path you, you traveled. And that's really um exciting. I, I'm sure. Very you, admirable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How much people would have done that? I mean, well, I like that you took the took the job outside of the box and did other things. And yeah, you're in real estate. You got your real estate license now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I stopped riding, I got my real estate license in uh, California, and I'm working on mine here in Florida. Oh, excellent. wow! Yeah. Wow, East Coast and West Coast. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like real estate, but I like interior design. I like you know fashion. And yeah, uh, you can see that by just looking at what you have behind you. you the you picture see behind you is very nice. Oh, yeah, that's, it's that's very that's nice. Awesome. Yes, it's Thank very you. nice. Yeah. And I uh, will be racing here three days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the winter. Yeah. So you know, I have some time to mm -hmm. do things for family, friends, and uh, the real estate market here is pretty cool. But it's yeah. so nice to see that, and and I mean this. It was just last year, July twenty fourth. You had a four day winner also, so you're still being dominant in in, in the game, still, Danny. I had a great season last last winter. Uh, I was, you know, when you, I I kind of made my comeback, and I felt like Kentucky wasn't there. Really COVID was tough, and uh, when I got here, I just I, I started really training hard, like the boxing, and I just was like, I, I said, I got. This is my last chance to really give it everything I've got. And I went in there like focused and like every race and making my notes. And I know what it takes to be there. Mm -hmm. And I said, at all costs, like, this is your chance. Like, you you got to do it right away. And I was just like living, breathing. Like in, in the races, I got to notice the guys that are a little rougher. You have to be way more aggressive. You have to mm -hmm. really come out of the gate, put your horse in the race get position, 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 position. And it's like, it was a fight that like, you just, I was like, I knew what I had to do. And I know I know how to do it. It was just really getting serious, focused, putting all the other stuff out of my life. Like, no more going out, no hanging out. I have to make this happen. And I have like nine months and I've got to go hard. And that's what I did. And it, well, it worked. And it showed. It go showed. big or go home, right? Yeah. 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 And, and and then when you compare the summer meet, then you got that winter meet, which is a real competitive oh. meet. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, yes. I for real. <laughs> like, wow! It's different Maybe. there, man. You're not getting. You're getting. You're no chance. You're getting a favorite. It's. It goes. I read Jose, Luis Saez. Then you had the second tier, which is Junior Alvarado. You had. Um, like, and you have all these other top riders that are under that that have been here and established themselves. Yeah. And it was really, and there's only seven horses in the race. You're, you're only filling the one race. You're fighting with the rest of them that we've been working all summer with yeah. for that one now. Like, it yeah. was really tough. So I really focused on breezing and working horses and telling my agent, look, I don't want to go in there and ride five thirty to one shots. That's going to make us look really bad. It's yeah. better we ride one or two, or one. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a shot, and then really work around this. Yeah, and, and then work yourself back in out to the summer meet. So yeah, you can, yeah, you keep your stats up. And... Quieter, but naturally, everyone's got quieter. It was tough. Yeah. Like yeah, I mean, it's... they're getting eight to five, even money, even money. Like there's yeah, nothing, there's... They're not fighting. and it's they're getting Todd Fletcher, uh, Christoph Clement. You're not beating yeah. that. All the top guys, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No. Yeah. It's, well. Well, before we get to it, you said you had some couple of oats picks for tomorrow? Yes. So, um. What are your thoughts? Well, I really love, I got a friend of mine, his name is Brandon Stroud, and he, um, is a, a handicapper, and him and my friend Matt, we all, we love horse racing, and they're at the Derby today, 
or that the jury mob, uh, so tomorrow's the oath, and we were going over our picks, and I, they go, who do you like in the oaths? And I'm like, I like Kathleen O, I think the last the la- Valentine if it rains, and I like Ness. And then I said, you know, of course, Echo Zulu. And they're like, yeah, Chantel, pick something that we don't know. And then the one guy, he said secret oath because he pointed out that if he had a, that horse, talk about, that Philly had a got second in, in the uh, Arkansas Derby, she would have been eligible for the Kentucky Derby. Kentucky Derby. And nobody's really talking about that. And I said, well, Stroud, the last time you told me something like that, it was, uh, he likes the Clockers special. We were at... Uh, Gulfstream and this first time starter, a five year old first time starter, his name was uh, Cadillac Black. And I had won a race and I went upstairs with the trainer who I won the race because he gave me a picture. And we went upstairs to see Brandon and Matt. And Brandon said, This horse clocker special on the grass, first time out, five eighths of a mile. I think it can win. Those clocker specials are really good. And I said, Five eighths as a five year old? Come on, Stroud, are you kidding me? If he misses the break, he got no chance. And they're like, I'm putting 500, I'm putting 1,000. I'm like, this is crazy. So they put their money, and the guy that was the training said, no, I know this horse has been training really well. And we all went, it is? And he's like, yeah, he's stabled next to my horse. So they're like, now Stroud's like, I'm putting 1,000. And anyway, they go to the gate, they get in the gate, the horse stumbles. I said, we're dead. She'll never recover at 5'8". Cadillac Black went around we're starting to look like he's making he's coming he's coming and then we're cheering and we're screaming you think it was the Kentucky Derby and the horse wins wow wow so we were like Brandon Stroud he's really good with those clocker specials and he likes that horse so I was like ah, I think I might pick that one secret oath but oh. if it rains then I want to go for a, I don't know that venti valentine are we are we are we calling for rain shiny down there? They say, say it's gonna rain a lot. It's gonna be totally raining all day tomorrow there. Wow. And uh, Saturday and no rain. And Saturday no rain. So the ladies gonna get rain and the boys get no rain. Yeah, and the track there, it's a longer stretch and rail is gonna be really good. Secret Oath does have the rail, uh, but doesn't like the dirt doesn't like the the rain, the sloppy track. Oh. Well, the long shot, the long shot. I suppose that the vent, vent it by lenses went on the ra- the, the sloppy track before. Yeah. Sloppy <laughs> and, yeah. Well, so that could be the one of the long shots. Well, we'll yeah. see how it goes. Look at this oh. lovely comment. This show touches my heart. I'm loving it. <laughs> that was good. Way to go, Chantel. Well, Thank nice. you, guys. Yes, yes. It's been very nice having you, Chantel, and it's been a pleasure to hear your journey. And we hope that you continue having some success in what you're doing and showing up every time out there on the weekends. On, on hopefully tomorrow. Are you writing tomorrow too? Is it? I do. I write two tomorrow and four on Saturday. Okay. So we're going to give us a tip because that Sean Hall is a trainee. He doesn't give tips. So we want a tip from you. No, they say the horse in the first race they, they like, but I've never been on it. But I do have a tip for you for Sunday. A horse called Lucy Lucy. And I won on her first time out. And in the other, there's another horse called Divine Connection. I've been reading her since Billy Day 2. They're against each other, but I, I picked Winky Winky. And those two, I think that could be your exact box. Okay. Ooh. All right. That's the best thing the about this Winky show, Winky. man. <laughs> One thing about this show, we get everything. We get tips. <laughs> <laughs> we get advice. We get, uh, I love it. <laughs> Chantel, we actually have one more comment and we okay. want you to take a read of it. Before Chantel goes, oh. she has to do the Pat Husband's imitation <laughs> one more time. Shani, 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 no, Shani, no. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great, man. You guys have a great night. You too, Chef. Oh, uh, so much success and great things to your show. And thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. Well, that's that, that that's the man right there. Sean Hall was the person who started this thing, and so all the tools goes to him too. And we just follow him behind what he's done. 
So no, thank you, my guys thank here, you. and I, I thank them for, you know, they take up the slap when I'm feeling down, and I'm feeling down today, but <laughs> you guys rose the occasion. Chantel was a breath of fresh air, seeing you, speaking to you. I thank you thank so you. much for coming to our show, man. Thank you very much, and Thanks stay again. healthy, and I love uh, you guys. You stay okay. safe out there too, Shani, and God okay. bless yes. you. Okay. Take care. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, bye All right. Bye. Hey, wow. guys. That was... That was an excellent show, huh? Yes. It was Wonderful. great. Wonderful. I, were... I really, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Chantel, I, I learned so much more about her. And like you said, Sean, she's so much into everything. Like, yes, from her pilot's license to real estate and to doing the trotting, <laughs> even when she won the running race. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's no, wonderful. Man. I, you, know, I mean, you can do anything in life that you put you know what you want to do yeah. that's the great thing yeah. about it and that's what she's done you know what i mean so her bucket list has got a lot of ticks on it a lot of ticks yes. on it, you know no man yeah. this was really a great show i mean i learned so much i i didn't expect to hear all of that and um and some yeah <laughs> well, which was great and, i think well, the best thing i like is her imitations of many people <laughs> from the Irish to the Belgians. <laughs> she bring English, Japanese, she bring everything. Japanese, she bring every piece of everything. You know what I mean? She did it all. Like, she did it all. You know what I mean? She did it all, man. That was great. <laughs> so, I, I mean, so I'm wonderful. so impressed. I think that what Hollywood do to you, I think you, 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 you create that skill of acting. And yes, I don't great. know. Well, toodles to her. Well, before we go, I would like to show one of our great sponsors, the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. We wanted yes. to invite all of you listeners out there. And um, we had a great show. We're still going. We have a few more segments left. But here's our invitation to all of you. <laughs> Our BTMI Weekly Report updates you on Barbadian jockeys, trainers, and horsemen working throughout North America. Rocco Bowen, Rashawn Latchman, and Kyle Carter were the only Bajan winning jockeys in North America between March 20th, 29th, and May 4th. Rocco Bowen scored two winners last Saturday, April 30th, and once on May 1st at Hawthorne to move to 23 winners this year. Kyle Carter is holding his own at Turf Paradise, winning his fourth race for the year on Tuesday from 34 mounts, which was his only mount for the day. Rashawn Latchman won once yesterday at Charlestown to be the leading Bajan rider in North America. Meanwhile, Mr. Ken Ramsey He'll be looking to send over Casanova Kiven over to Barbados after he won at Keeneland recently. He says he hopes to send it to Barbados for the 2023 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. And welcome back to Leroy Trotman and Sean Hall. Yes, um, we have to thank um, the Garrison Savannah for providing us with this information. I am very grateful for that, to those guys over there. Yeah, there's Garson a Facebook Savannah. page. Yes, Facebook page, Garrison Savannah. Anyone can search on Facebook yes. with Garrison Savannah Racetrack. We appreciate all the input that they have provided. And um, it's a great um, group on Facebook that yes. you can learn not only about Barbados horse racing, but horse racing from around the world and follow all of our Barbadian horsemen but also other horsemen that are done wonderful things in horse racing correct yeah man well that was our guys are still doing well 
I'm happy to see that. And uh, we got a big one coming up for us, Happy Joseph Jr. Wish him all the best with White Barrio on the Kentucky Derby. Bring it home for Barbados. Nice. But listen, I, I, if I heard correctly, is the horse already coming to the Gold Cup? Ramsey's coming back. He Kentucky. had an interview, and I heard he said he was bringing the horse to Barbados for the Gold Cup. Wow. So, um, Safi. We challenge other trainers to come out here and do the same. Yes. But wow. to have Safi Joseph Jr. competing in the Gold Cup, that would be a fabulous thing. It will bring out the crowds for sure. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He just yes. entered he just is inter horse for the same Ramsey for Sunday at, at Woodbine too in a stake race also. Okay. So, yeah. The horse that pre that was previously trained by Wesley Ward. Patrick rode that horse a couple times also to Artie Princess is the horse's name. Okay. Did you get Who's called? Got the mount up? No, I have a call in the race already. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. He did call him. Safi did call me and asked me to ride the horse also. Right. So, you know, so but he does have a horse coming up for that race on and which is for Mr. Ramsey also. So Kerry Depassi is saying we should have a separate segment talking about the Kentucky Derby with Safi Soda. Well, well we have to talk about that after the next time we'll have to talk about that after the show, after the Kentucky Derby, because that's coming up this weekend, right? Yes, and these guys are busy, man. These guys don't really have time to do these type of shows when they're um Yeah. No, we are working we are working on some bigger fish to bring in, but we have to wait till the after the Kentucky Derby to try and attract those fish before you know, after sorry. So we are working on it, guys, trying to make the um things bigger and better for you guys to enjoy our show more. And we definitely will give you guys what you're asking for we just well we would also like to go through some of our lovely comments that we weren't able to bring out earlier where carlos grant said a big shout out to our man akeem mm -hmm. yes. earlier in the show um we're really hoping and get these um barbadian horsemen into the yeah. horse racing industry throughout north america and i mean barbadians we're keen we're interested we're great horsemen we just want to get through some of this red tape and hopefully give our boys a chance. That's yeah. very true. Good Carlos night. Grant also says good night to the team. Sean, Leroy, and Brett continue to do the good work in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Good evening to the horse. Edwin. Edwin. Edwin Rocket Weeks. Yes, man. <laughs> and Rocket, he also man. mentioned a height to Colbert. Nice yes. to see him. Yes. <laughs> Keep working smart. Correct. Hello. My and friend. our man Rodney Barrow from last week. Yes. Smiling Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Rodney, brother. I think Sean That's hit the nice. nail on the head. We had a great show tonight. Not yes, only Sean, a good thank one. Thank you, Sean. Sean is a regular visitor, man. We appreciate him for, for you no know, coming by every day, every week. Yeah. yeah. And our man good. Damien Simpson said Chantal rode Moff for me when she won in Barbados that he would wow. never forget that day. Wow. Great. Good Great. job, Damien. <laughs> and guys, wow. we might have um, gelded Sean last week, but look at what our man. Tyler Gaskin said, we were the quietest us boys have ever been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I must admit, I was kind of, you know, Chantel Sullen got me off very early on the gears. So I was in trouble. I, 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 trouble. I stumbled at the gears, guys. I lost my reins, my foot and everything. <laughs> but Sean, you got to give her the kudos. I mean, she has done a lot for the sport. She's done a yes, lot man. for herself. Yeah, and I'm kudos to her. I mean, yeah, we have to let her talk, talk, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I have to sit back. Yeah. Very give, interesting. Give the ladies the floor, man. We got to give the yeah. ladies the floor. You know yes. what I mean? I think it was a great interview because she talked. She let us all. She let it all hang out, man. She gave us yeah. everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. We, yes. we didn't have to interfere. You no. know. 
and we were yes. very respectable of her of of, of, yes. of the, you know that's what's yes. important you know what i mean yes she give it all she told us everything she another wonderful it. show guys and i want to just eat this sean again you still do it any model in sean we didn't get a chance to ask to that. Tell. Yeah. I'm sure well, we, were, we started talking about her doing the equine um yeah. the watches yeah that she did in 2005 and stuff mm -hmm. yeah but guys you know let's just go jump back i know chantel was the, was the the host of the thing of the show but what we those guys you interviewed earlier in the show sharp yeah. something that we yeah. gotta you know continue to yeah. push and 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 get these guys over here because the way those guys spoke and everything it was very you know those guys really touch you you know to hear how they speak and everything knowing that we have those kind of guys still at home i know we talk about a lot of youngsters and stuff like that but i mean if those guys speak like that and the youngsters will just take note of what they're doing and all we're trying to yes. do for them that we can touch them in the right way and like i said i'm going to follow up on what i did for that guy today with the trainer tomorrow and the next day to make sure that i push it to, to get it happen because unless they see it happening they won't be you know what i mean it will it don't mean that we're not doing anything we want to show that we're doing something but one thing i want to add with ray williams right ray williams became a sovereign award winner being having a being on a work permit yes canada yes right yes and it shows you what somebody who's coming to canada work permit could do they could go to the highest heights yes you know what i mean it doesn't matter if they were on a they were, they were a citizen of canada or what he came to canada on a work permit and won the sovereign award in 2017 and I think that says a lot, you know, it, it tells you a lot that it doesn't matter. Once you have the talent and you've given that opportunity, you can make it to wherever you want it, you know, to make it. Yeah. Especially those young apprentices who come to Barbados, because they're the guys who can get hot on the West Coast out there, you know, with those tracks down there. Because it doesn't seem that many of apprentices get the chance to write a wood bang. Good plan, yeah. But things like you know, the changes that has to be made and stuff like that in order for those guys to get to do that. Because like that work permit thing, they're only allowed to do that out west, but I would find they have to have more stuff to be able to do that. And I mean, what's the way to do it and where to do it and how to do it? Those are the questions that need to be answered. Yeah. Well, we're talking mostly about jockeys and apprentices, yeah. but I mean, what about our grooms and exercise grooms. riders? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, there's a definite need yes for that in yes. woodbine in, yes. at toronto i mean yes yes no, the roof definitely. Needed, man. they need it yeah. badly we definitely. just need that racing room man to yeah. let our guys go does that because you are not having much room how does that affect trainers bringing horses in because of not much help is it does that mean that trainers just understand still that of course they are of course yeah. they, are. they you know there's trainers have to tell their owners or find something to tell their owners in order to slow the the incoming of those horses down because mm -hmm. they're over overloaded right now there's some trainers how much people overloaded. are needed at woodbine right now tell me oh boy i mean About another 200 300 i i would say i would say you know comfortable you know what well. i mean I mean, I mean, when you 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 talking from hot walkers, still you got to mention hot walkers. We're talking grooms and and and, and exercise rider, but we're still talking about hot walkers. I mean, there's how many trainers have those exercise machines? The, the you know mm -hmm. that can put horses on, but at the same time, I mean, the other day Mark Cassie's own was broken down, right. so now he had to turn to not be able to send out eight horses at a time because he doesn't have hot eight hot walkers for those horses to come back in and catch those horses to cool them out. Wow, when you look right. at it like that. You know, it's like you having your phone and depending on your phone to work and it, it, it gets the, the Wi-Fi goes off or something. Now you're screwed. So the same thing with the hot walking machine. You know what I mean? You go in there now. He can't send out. If he are custom send out eight horses a set, he can't do that. He's got to send out maybe eight one set and hopefully, you know, one of those news, one of those same exercise riders to cool up one of those horses. And the next time he may have to send out seven or the next time he may have to send out six. And then when he has horses working, a horse that's working has to cool up longer. Right. And then if the boss yeah. if the boss wants the assistant trainer to bring in two or three jockeys to to work horses that same morning, now cup three three is is exercise where they have to sit and let the because mm. the, then now he's gone from setting up eight horses plus three is you know is eleven, 
I heard right. some grooms have like seven horses you know, under yeah. one groom. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And back I mean, in my day, yeah, you're lucky it's, if you had four or five. Exactly. So, the, but there now they're go. being overworked. Get to the track at three thirty, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just and they can't. There's, there's no way. There's no way can, that horse can get the all the 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 hundred percent undivided attention. Somebody's gonna get. You know, like we we use a horse race in parlay, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, you know, like we Sean, we had got some emails from some person that who was trying to help us out a little bit, and I sent the email to you. Yes. Our girls are looking after seven horses now. Right? Yes. Yeah, and it, it is happening. It is happening. You know what I mean? And we had mentioned that email that we had got from some from you know some person that's trying to help us with that wood buying, and the people that we have to touch, and it's not just the premier. They're also saying the. The, the immigration labor um, person, minister. the minister to help us and, and try and get things across. But it's just not for Woodbine. We have to get other tracks on board on board also to help us. So but, Peter Gaston, I mean, thanks, Peter. And uh, hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> hi, Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> My girl there, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so when we can, you know, talk about that a little more, Sean, and understand that, you know, we just it just can't happen at Woodbine. We need, you know, these other tracks on board saying the same thing that they need this help. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we have but to try. You guys out, out west, Steve, Steve asking them guys out there. That I mean, we have to get yeah. his thoughts, Steve, see what's going on out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And see so, if they were be interested to get on board. Yeah. Uh, we we have to do that because I mean nobody's jumping up and, and I'm not saying nobody's jumping up and helping us because we did have somebody that reached out that made a phone call to me after we spoke earlier uh, when we did the Rodney show. Yeah, and so we were speaking about me. getting Doug Ford in, involved in the government, huh? The premier, yes. oh, yeah, Tobacco? yeah. But I mean, somebody at Woodbine did reach out to me and did you know tell me a few things that I shared with Sean in the email and give us great yeah. ideas you know what i mean so somebody's paying attention and is listening and is trying to help you know what i mean but where's the next place do we go to who's the next person we have to go to and that person i kind of mentioned some stuff to us so we have to try and do our best in, in every way possible to try and get to the people that they're saying that we have to get to and getting the right people on board but well, Sean think, did think, a great job in getting those three interviews for us. I yes, mean, so now an we exercise can, rider, a yeah. groom, and an apprentice, now a jockey, yeah. Ray Williams. I mean, Sean, great job on pulling that yeah. those interviews together. And a big shout out to our man, Sean Hammer. Hammer, yes. We can't yeah. forget yeah. Hammer, man. Some, um, yes, the man behind the screen. The man behind the screen man. Man. all the great work, right? Yes. He, so he I mean, passed together some of those videos, man. Made my job easy. Yes, he left one of them till five thirty this afternoon, but, <laughs> but he got it done. He got it done. Got the ropes. It. Yeah. But what, I'm say, what I'm saying, guys, we are making progress in somewhere, in some form, in some way that we're doing it. So yeah. we have to continue pushing the envelope so that we can get but you know get people here. Are, yes. Do you think that once we start galvanizing uh, a whole you know I mean, not in numbers, you don't think the fight is better? Well, of course, of course, of course. So it means that everybody will have to have something to say. I mean, I yeah. don't know if everybody is willing to do it, but um, well, we I'm can sure only try, right? We can only try. Only try. You know, try. it's, it's yeah. not, you're not going anywhere with Canadian workers at the track. That's a no. proven thing no. that no. It's, not, no. it's not happening. I no, mean, no. It's not happening. You know, you got you got trainers that got to worry about you know that morning the morning of getting a text. Oh, this body's not coming in. Next text, that body's not coming in. You know what I mean? Now you got to look. Oh, shoots! I got so I got so much horses to take care of. Trainers, I know one trainer had to you know come in early and jump right into those stalls right away because somebody didn't come in. You know what I mean? They got some trainers that got groom um swing grooms that only putting in two days a week and that two days a week is trying to get eight grooms off so the groom is only getting a, a, every two weeks you know you know what i mean on every three weeks is getting the day off oh that's what's happening and we got guys that come in that working at the track itself for maintenance and stuff that are coming in and jumping in and helping with stalls and making that extra buck for themselves mm -hmm. you know what i mean this is what's happening 
you know. And we got some yeah, willing this, horsemen this problem, here. This problem has been a problem since we first came to Canada. Yeah, I mean, and it continue, it's worse now, Sean. I mean, we came in and save, we save it a lot. We save it a yeah. lot. We you came know? 89, and then by 92, it was over. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they pulled the rug under it, and then I think it started back in 98. Yeah, it's it's hard, man. And, you know, it's just, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I think that and it's, people it's, have it's hard enough to over. Their problem, and they need to deal with it instead of. I think that they, they, they like putting their head in the sand and just pretend there's no problem. I mean, yeah, but we need help. Well, hopefully with the show that we're doing and showing the bright, young, talented horsemen of Barbados. I mean, yeah. let's hopefully Roy, somebody else reaches out to you this week after this yeah. show. Yeah. And we get a little extra help. Yeah. The one thing I'm worried about, right, is that you had a lot of guys, I know there's a lot of them missing now that you know, were at the track like a year ago and because of the bottleneck system at the garrison because you know me we only could help a small so you know yeah. i mean only four or five guys get through at a time i mean yeah it's not the big 10 20 guys because there's not enough to go around yeah but a lot of guys that were very talented writers you know you just don't see them anymore they just give up you know they just throw their hand in the air and you know but it's, I, I don't want to say that they're forced to, but at the same time, they got to look for another avenue to try of and course. make a living, right? Of course. You know what I mean? Because they, they got the families to feed. You know, those guys that are very interested in making sure that their families are fed have to go for a different avenue to feed their family. You yeah. know what I mean? And I we're mean, not just, and let's make sure that we're not just speaking about Barbados alone. Let's speak about the Caribbean, because I mean, we're all yes, West I mean, Indians together and we want to look out for our guys. You know what I mean? Because I really want to, you know. They only try to do start here first, though. I mean, but yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I do understand that, but I mean, there might be a, a, a Jamaican guy might see our show and hearing it, another Trinidadian guy, and they might be able to say, you know what, these guys, Barbados guys, got their show going on every Thursday night. You guys should tune in and listen to it, and maybe somebody might do start something from that end on their side for their people, and the same thing it goes around. You know what I mean? Enough, so it's not I, I just. Mean, I mean, a lot of Jamaican guys, Guyanese from Guyana. You know, me have have been friending me recently and asked me a lot of questions, that kind of stuff. And you're right, yeah. everybody, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who want to, to, to work, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we just can't get the door open to to um We gotta to keep knocking everybody. on it. We gotta keep we, we gotta keep knocking on it. We gotta keep knocking on it. You know what I mean? It's gotta eventually open. But what Sean was saying, there's a little bottleneck in Barbados because there's only so many horses in Barbados, right, Sean? So many horses in Barbados. Yeah. You gotta understand, guys. This this is the real problem in Barbados right now. When you have heroes, youngsters look up to heroes. Yes. yes. And we have many Barbadian writers who are heroes to youngsters now. Yes. I mean, Rocco Boeing, Rico Walker, Patrick Husband, yes. Chris Christopher Husband. Husband. I mean. Yeah. Offered won a championship. Yeah. These guys are winning championships. Latchman, Latchman. Now you Latchman, got Carl Carter and all these guys. You know I mean? All these guys, you youngsters are looking at these guys. Yeah. And I keep telling you guys, you got guys who are six foot two and three who should be bowling fast for West Indies and they keep on coming to the restaurant. The restaurant. The <laughs> horses. I don't get it. You know? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm but impressed with him. Ray Williams keeping his weight down. Yeah, boy. And That's I mean, pretty impressive. He's six That's foot two. Impressive. I didn't realize he was that yeah, big. Pretty impressive. Because he was taller than me. Yeah. He, me feel, he had me feel like I were right again. Yeah. <laughs> pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. But it, it's just to show you, though, you know, that the, the, those guys, we can maintain doing it. And Shanta was speaking about the health part of it in today's world now that you can do so much more health wise and there's so much more. Oh, therefore, that YouTube here is that the computers are here to teach you and give you understanding how better to eat and everything to maintain yourself mm -hmm. and not having to go and take Lasex or be flipping and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So things are so much better. So it's so much easier. It's just to get the opportunity now to go there and do what's what you really want to do and be successful doing it, mm -hmm. you know. And and that's the thing. And our show is trying to. Our, we're doing as much as we can on our show to help that's the great thing and people are listening we're getting ears out you know for, for us to, to 
to be better at what we do and to get the people to get the help. So, Sean, again, you know, you started this thing and we can only but continue and hope for the best. You know what I mean? Hey, Derek, how are you doing, brother? Listen, man, all, 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 I mean, all of us had our opportunities to come to Canada. Yes. And I always think it's fair. The, the, the generation following should have a chance to, you know? Yes. And, and um, we inspire those that get the opportunities to yes. realize not everyone's going to get that opportunity. Yeah. So I mean, be on their P's and Q's. And I mean, keep your head down, work hard, mm -hmm. stay out of trouble and stuff. I mean, you just never know. Lots you of never know when, that, when that, that opportunity comes, you got to be ready and ready to, to go for it. You know what I mean? Like the two yeah. guys interviewed the interview there tonight, they're really, really willing and to come. And it's that, that needs that door to open for them. You know? I mean, even with, I, I, I know that um, Mike Paula, I was speaking to, one of our guys who was in contact with Josie Paulo. Yeah, and there's a problem. That, yeah, to get um, Cole, Colbert to, to go with them. But they're more interested for next year because things are so um, backed up right now. But I mean. Yeah. Well, there's, a, there's I know one of the new guys that came up, um, he's working for them as a groom right now. I don't remember okay. his name, but I see him every day. And, and I know him mm -hmm. from a little youngster in Barbados, and he's there. And he's making, he says, Leroy, man, I'm I'm enjoying this, and I'm so thankful. He's so thankful, and, and you know I mean? And every time I walk in there, he's in there in those stalls just doing his thing, man. You know? Yeah, we got, I mean, we, we, we get there, but if we got Barbados guys looking out, and you know what I mean? They, they approach us, but they approach me, and... I, I, I go and talk to you guys and we start doing this and we start making some traction and you know things are looking you know and Leroy you're reminded you know you're up there you're well respected too and everybody knows you because you, you're, you're Patrick's man and everybody knows Patrick he's top man and so yeah. you're in a good position you know yeah, yeah. Good, well, like I position. said today after I earned I listened to that interview Within 10, 15, yes. 20 minutes, I was at the trainers. And I'm um, like, I tell you from the beginning of the show what I did today. And yes. she said, well, Ellie Ref, you recommend this guy. I'm in. You know what I mean? Yes. So I'm just going to follow up on it now and try and get things rolling. Yeah, that's the beauty about it, right? When when you recommend somebody, you know, people listen. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. People listen so, to those so we're knocking the door. We're knocking at the door from both ends. You know what I mean? Yes. We're knocking yes. on the door. So you do your part down there. And I'm going to try my best to do my part up here. You know what yes. I mean? And hope that at the end, we all can come out on top. But keep an eye on what works, Leroy. You yes. never know. You might yes. get somebody that pulls the right strings and yes. Yes. opens up lots of opportunities. So, yes. I mean, yes, to all of those youngsters learning to be jockeys at the horse charity in Barbados, yes, keep trying. Great That's job, awesome. Robert Pierce. And yeah. um, they're doing at the horse charity, teaching the riders and Let's let's just hope for a lot of doors to be open in the coming weeks and months. Well, don't forget too, the government also said they were going to go ahead with the academy proposal that you know I, I took to them many years ago. They, Tell us a bit more about that, Sean. What what proposal for an academy? Myself, John O. Jones, and Marsha Hines Lane. But we're taking off the lane for now. I've seen her say she's taking the lane off. So she's Marsha Hines. Marsha Hines. <laughs> Hi, yes. Marsha. Right. And Marsha, at the time when I met Marsha, she was working at the West Indies Cricket Board Academy at um, Cave Hill. And my first meeting with her was very, I don't know, she was kind of harsh on me. She was kind of very harsh because she told me that. You know, guys like myself come back to Barbados and we don't share our knowledge. You know what I mean? We just keep everything to ourselves. And, and How I, long ago was this? This is when they first came back. So this is about 2013 or so. Okay. And she, you know, she was pretty harsh. And I, I, I said, I said, I said, good night. Um, nice to meet you too. You know, that type of stuff. But she, we got talking and I kind of because I at that time in my life I didn't you know I just I just had my surgery and I wasn't really thinking much about horses you know what I mean I I just wanted to 
because you know the news I got, uh, uh, the, the two make sure I'm really think about getting back in the business and that kind of stuff. So I was like, you know what? Your mind is, you don't know what you're going to do. So you're kind of lost. So I didn't plan to get back into horses at all, you know? So after she told me that, I I said, uh, if you're serious about that, I said, like, there's only two, only one other person here in Barbados right now that I would talk to to work on a project and see what we could come up with. And I said, John Jones is the other guy. And the three of us sat down for few months put together this this plan on how to construct an academy for for young Barbadians and she that she's an academic so obviously she was going very top heavy in academic and I told her that we're not cut in that same cloth you gotta teach us different right and I was saying we need to teach our youngsters to speak in front of the camera because when you win a race, that's the first thing you do to put a camera and, and a mic in front of your face. You need to teach us how to finance our money. You need to teach our young men to treat women properly. You know what I mean? Because that's one of the things they come out here and again, trouble, always troubling some girl or something like that. Teach us how to eat properly when we go to these big functions. You know, those type of stuff. So all we, these things are in this academy course? We have everything. I give I got everything is in place of how this academy should run. And and then we updated it since then too. So we added some other stuff and things like that. But well, be sure to share it with me. I mean sounds I, I thought, interesting. I, I could send you. I could send you the. Um, I got all the documents. So it's presently, like, presently, what's going on right now? That's then. What are presently? Well, it, I, well, last time I heard that the, it went to estimates. So I didn't really. I got a little lost there. But when it go to estimates, they were putting money to just know how much money they were going in it. The last time I spoke about it with anybody was with um, Corey Lynn. He called me just before he did. He announced that he was running and he asked me if i was still interested in it so i said well you know i mean i i didn't hear anything for such a long time so i kind of i said no i i'm trying to yeah to give up on it going. i didn't really tell him to give up on it. i told him you know i'm i'm doing other things but i said corey if 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 you get it going i'm here i'm still in barbados i haven't left barbados yet because i just said it was I wasn't far from leaving, right? So I'm still here, and I might be here because some guys, you know, offered me some horses to train here and things. So I said, I'm here. So he told me, Sean, we, we you know, it's something that you have to be part of because a lot of the ideas with you. And I spoke to, I spoke to, I, I spoke to ministers and governments in the D, the B, and then the other B. So three different governments I spoke to. Okay, I spoke to three ministers of sport. I spoke in three to different governments. In three different governments, yes. I spoke to Stephen. That's Lee. over a span of 12 years, huh? Well, 2014, yeah, because the bees the were just about to get beat. I spoke to so much ministers, and then I spoke to, like, suddenly one day we had a real big zoom thing where he had all his people and so all these guys looking at me and i was talking and you know i did a lot i did a lot of talking so it's out there you know what i mean so it's what like, what's holding it up now is just I, we're I waiting with someone in the I, government I, I, uh i i I, I, I haven't had the time to um to call corey to see what's going on or since he's become a he's he's now in a minister of government and stuff so i haven't really had time to because let's put the government. pressure on them now man if you if they're now in the government well, let's let's no, get them I, to get I up know, and give I, I a little push a no but the thing about it is is the reason why i really think a a, a cabin me was necessary is that i think we, we need to make sure when these guys come to canada they're well we don't want to have guys like you roy having to be clean up the mess when they're given trouble and you know I me mean? you know Leroy, you say you're gonna go and 
you want to clean up our mess here. You know what I mean? We're going to separate the sheep from the goats in Barbados. If you can't fall in line to go overseas with your behavior, but you're ongoing. Simple. You know what I mean? Because there's no sense sending people to Canada or anywhere in the world to embarrass the country. Okay, right. Correct. Because right. you know, you guys, all of us have set standards of, of, of people. Of the Barbadian culture. And, yeah, and they, and they what know that we are good people. Are. But you know, they got bad apples, they everything else. They're bad apples. And we got to make sure that everything is done properly by the time these guys leave Barbados. So we your academy, could your academy also benefit other industries, not just the horse racing industry? Like I'm we're sure, talking, I'm, we need I'm, to teach our guys how to manage their money, how to eat at yeah. special functions, how, how to talk. Right. Like for myself, with jockeys and stuff like that, right? I know that jockeys and horse people are cut from a different type of cloth, really. You know, maybe we could be very talented at what we do, but other things we're just not very good rough at. Rough around the edges. <laughs> rough, very rough around the edges, right? But we still. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be given a chance. Right. Correct. Correct. And I still, I still believe that we need to really clean up our act in Barbados. That was was your academy that. only for horsemen? Because maybe if Marsha Hines, you said, and other government ministers realize that what you're I talking think, about in this academy could actually help many other industries, just I, I think, not I think, the horse no, race. You know what? I think, you, I think they realize that. And I think they were using it for a broader, a broader paintbrush, you know what I mean? Right. It was a broad print brush. So I so so if that was going to be a broader print brush, then you know what I mean I I don't know where it would stand in helping, you know what I mean? But But you could be the one that directs traffic, Sean. You could get that person in the tourism industry to help and you'll be guiding them to look, you need to get these young teenagers that are looking to go into waitressing, to chef, to maitre d', to tourist attractions, but, to like, see, um, like for us, like we were, we were saying, I would really have to show you Brett because we were even saying that we could have, this is how I was seeing it for myself also, because we have so many young, young Barbadians doing well that there are no Canadian youngsters who are looking up to them also. And we were okay. saying we can use that as a selling point that Canadians could come to Barbados to to be an academy also. You know what I mean? And so it could be an international academy, yes. huh? Interesting. Correct. Now, Correct. is this academy the way? The more I'm hearing of it, is it really like people skills? It's a it's a we're teaching people how to live in the real world, how to invest, how to save money, yeah. how to set little budgets and stuff. Yes. Correct. Set aside I, for necessities. It, wanted, it wasn't only a jockey academy. It was it was academy for for, for grooms, for you know, people who want to be assistant trainers, for everything. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be a, a, a place where it would be a well-rounded place for everybody to um so in other words i was hoping that something where you can have horses the academy will have their own horses um then it would also be you have the grooms they look after the horses we have the riders we're hoping to have um places for people to, to sleep and that sort of thing you know what i mean to keep them close to the, to the environment and you know it was I have everything written down. I mean, 12 years is a lot of time, man. I mean, and, you know, I, I, I can't remember everything right now, but I have to go back and read it to refresh my memory. Well, be sure to share with me. You never know I, I'm, I'm if sure you get the right, right people involved. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I was hoping that, suppose we get somebody who have a lot of money, you know what I mean, to invest in something like that and see it as an investment of the people of Barbados. You know what I mean? Not an investment. I like it. To, you know what I mean? And I, I think sometimes 
that's what I'm noticing that we are not seeing enough projects that are better to the people, to better the people, to make people go forward. I think we just keep people here where they tend to just spin in the dirt and go nowhere, but invest in things that youngsters love. So youngsters seem to love horses and horse racing. Let's put things in place. I don't why can't we put four or five or six million dollars into a project that will help John, I don't mean to cut, I don't mean to cut you off, but you know, I am polit politics and politicians. I don't I'm not trying to be rude here, you know what I mean? But if it's something that's not benefiting them, well I don't you know, know. I, 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 I come up I come up I come up in a house with a politician, my father, right? And I, I always heard my father thought that he put, he did a lot. He always gave back to his country and that kind of stuff. So Sean, that's your me, father. That's a different, yeah, but that's a different I, I, I'm a fool too. I follow the same thing too. You know what I mean? I always talk about warning. You always want to get back and help people, but people always kick you in the butt. You know what I mean? For doing that. And I, since I come back here, it's happened to me a lot. You know, you keep me, you see, helping people. But, um, you, know, you still want to try it all. You still got to try. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying not. But I don't want to keep spinning my my my, my wheels in, in, the, in the dirt. You know what I mean? And you, you know when they say about molasses going up a hill, how it, how it goes, right? Mm. Very, very slow. It don't go. <laughs> it don't go at all. So I, I'm not going to try and kill you guys' time because we're three hours into this. And I mean, it's, it's 10 o'clock. And you yes. know what I mean? Right. We, we started something and if those guys we, we, we test the waters with them and if they're not showing us we can have to look for a different avenue and let's try a different avenue for a change because i don't want to waste my time you don't want to waste your time i don't want to waste my time and honestly and but i mean if, you're, if, if, if your people get to a team that would be at least that one person be oh, helped. that's what i'm saying so <laughs> i just started i just started something and hopefully yeah. i mean with that started that we can think we can't the world isn't building a day you yes. know what I mean? And we just started. This is we are only on our our fourth show. Yes, correct. You, you know what I mean? So we have started something new. And every time we come to this to the to the, the forefront of this show, we're bringing something different to the table. You guys down there working your butts off and doing what you're doing, your butts off. So we're seeing some progress. So let's not try to make, try to build this world in one day or in by yes. four shows, right? Agree right. with me, guys. Correct. So yeah, let's. Right. Let's let's, take well, let's time wrap time. things up. Yep. Yeah. And get yes. um, the we'll live end this broadcast. Yes, yes. Um, so but we want to thank all time. of our listeners, yes. all yes. of our sponsors, sponsors the Barbados yeah. Turf Club, yeah. Barbados yeah. Tourism Marketing Inc. Yeah. Um, we're looking for other advertisers out there. Come and support Journeys yeah. Talk so, Show, hosted right. by Sean Hall and Leroy Trotman. Yeah. Here's so, signing off for episode four. Good night. Good night. God bless God, everyone. God bless everybody. Thank you. Cool.